Good morning, everybody. My name is Kevin Simpson. I'll be doing the play-by-play -play alongside my broadcast partner, Rob Weissman. Hello, guys. We got the uh, Bayou City Heat, and they are going to be taking on the Indianapolis Thunder, the Bayou City Heat, last one a World Series in 2002. So it's been a long ride back for them. Indianapolis Thunder coming in, and they have uh, won their last two uh, championships in the past two seasons, beating my Boston Renegades to, in 2016, and then taking out the Taiwan home run last year in 2017. So we got an exciting game here. Kind of, uh, we've got the youth of the Indianapolis Thunder, or the oldest, the youngest player on that roster, and the starting lineup is 22 years old. And then we've got on the other side the Bayou City Heat, and they've got some of these guys that have been playing since that 2002 team. Absolutely. They've got a, the Indy Thunder definitely have the age advantage. The Bayou City team definitely has the experience advantage. The skill advantage, obviously, is going to be going to the Indianapolis Thunder as they enter this game as the undefeated team. So Bayou City must beat Indianapolis two times today to win the world championship. And if that wasn't a big enough hill to climb, Bayou had to go through the loser's bracket, which is... The tall order, you have to win three games on Friday to go through, sorry, to go, they, they, they were undefeated to the semifinals, my, my mistake, so they only had to play two games on Friday, but they still have a mountain to climb as if the Thunder skill wasn't tough enough on them, they're yeah. going to have to uh, beat, it, beat them twice. I mean, the Thunder had a, you know, a much easier road. If we talk about the roads to their, to their championship run here, it, Bayou City's played eight games during this week. Indy's only played six, and Indy hasn't played a full game. They've 12 run every team that they've played. Let's, let's check that out. Indianapolis started on day one. They played St. Louis. They beat St. Louis 21 to eight. Then they played the BCS Outlaws. They beat them 13 to nothing. Then they played Cleveland Scrappers on the first day of a double, of double elimination, beating them 14 to one. And then on the second day of double elimination, they took out Chicago 14 to two. And then the Edge, which is a strong hitting team, they beat them 18 to one. Yesterday, they had an opportunity to play these Bayou City Heat. They 12 run them in five innings, 18 to six. So they're fresh. I mean, they haven't played a full game yet. On the other hand, Bayou City, they had an easy start to their tournament. They played Athens 14 to four. They beat Rochester 13 to nothing. Then they came out and took out Austin on the first day of the uh, I'm sorry, they took out Austin in... They lost. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Sorry. They lost to Austin in the, in the bracket. And that's actually interesting that they didn't come out of their bracket as a one seed and they made the championship game. Yeah. That's an interesting... I don't know... They made some... Uh, Bayou City made some defensive adjustments. One of the adjustments they made is they, they moved Blake Goudreau from a midfielder to the shortstop position and shored up that spot. He's been very productive for them defensively. And that was the key to their turnaround. They went on to... Uh, yeah, so then well, they made that fix after Austin. Then they got it going. They got up Tyler. They beat Tyler 24-5. to They beat Colorado 9-5. to They beat Kevin's Jets 8-7. to um, Then they lost. We already talked about that. They lost to Indy 18-6. to And then they came back. And uh, they were able to hold on yesterday against the San Antonio Jets, 16-13. Uh, to 13. They did have a rough sixth inning. You almost you had them on the ropes in the sixth inning. But they were uh, able to stay calm and collective and hold on, and, and here they are. Yeah. So we'll see this morning if the experience of the Bayou City Heat um, can... I tell you what, their defense is much improved from the last couple of years. They struggled in 2017 World Series, and in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. They, they, they did have some struggles defensively. Looks like they've shored that, that up uh, quite a bit. Rob Wygand is uh, a, a standout well. defensive player uh, that'll be in, starting in a left center field. And uh, <clears throat> he makes a big difference. You know, he makes put outs back there. Daryl Miner played really well yesterday in the semifinal yes, game against the San Antonio Jets. And we're about to get started. Uh, the leadoff hitter is going to be Eric Rodriguez for the Indy Thunder. I'll try to set the defense for you after, as soon as I can. <clears throat> Jared Woodard, of course, the pitcher for the Indy Thunder. First pitch to Rodriguez is blasted high and deep to center field. This one lands behind all of the defenders, and it's gone. One to nothing, Indy Thunder. Wow, this is a leadoff first pitch. Just hits an absolute bomb up the middle of the field. That just gets the team started, gets them going. Wygand had a very small chance at it. 
deep out in the outfield, probably around a 170 line, ranging far from the left field position into the center of the field, diving on his stomach, unable to come up with it. I think what's going to happen, you know, there's a lot of age out there, and I'm an old guy, so I'm going to stick up for the old guys, but your body takes a beating out there when you're diving and playing deep like that and hitting the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Gerald Dykus at the plate now for the Thunder, the designated hitter. Young guy, a lot of speed. First pitch, swung on and missed. To set the defense for the Bayou City Heat, Blake Boudreaux is playing shortstop. That's at left center field at about 85 feet from home plate. Wygand is playing left center field about 140 feet from home plate. There's a foul ball off the left field side. Count goes, no balls, two strikes. Daryl Miner's playing uh, nearly right up the middle. His depth looks to be about 130 feet. Uh, right center field, we've got Lee Rodriguez. He's playing at 140 feet. Joseph Fleeks, right center field at 120. There's a pass ball. And short right field is going to be Ja'Cory Wiley, the speedy second baseman for the Heat. O2. There's a ground ball. It's going to barely get to the 40-foot line. Foot Blake's base. on it, and he's got it up, and he's out. Dykus can fly. Blake Boudreaux's not the uh, fastest guy, but he's quick. He came in, he made that play, dive right on that line, picked up the ball right on his armpit. That's just a great way to, to make that in, just diving into it. Ball rolls into his side, able to make that play. Put Dykus out by about two, three steps. Yeah, absolutely, and I think... One of the keys to that, to get to the, the 40 foot line, you have to either have to have a lot of foot speed to, be, to go from the shortstop you know, position to the 40 foot line, or you have to be positioned at 82, 85 feet, which uh, Blake seems to be is, you know, to give him uh, smart positioning yeah. by the Bayou City Heat. Now batting is Zach Bueller. First pitch is lined Bueller deep in the left center field, gets Oh, Wygan knocks it down, and he's got it up. Two down. Nice play by Rob Wygan. You know, Bueller took a step to first base. He did not He did not hear third base immediately. He was a pause. He didn't get out of the box right away. And that might have been the difference in that play. Wygan made an unbelievable play stopping that ball out there. Um, but that, and it wasn't one of those shots where it was right at him. It was, a, it was a deep shot, and he had to take two steps to his left, and he knocked it down and came up with it. Nice play. Rob Wygand, the standout left fielder for the Bayou City Heat, one of the few outfielders to have made all-tournament team. Not an easy thing to do in the outfield, Rob. He is an unbelievable uh, defensive player, and he has been in this game for a very long time. And, you know, I don't think he's played a game this year until this World Series. Uh, considered by many the best outfielder in all of b Corey White, the power-handed right-hander. This kid is possibly the fastest guy in the league. If he's not, you could probably count him. <laughs> well, you know, when you ask him, <laughs> on one his ground ball right down the third base line. And he's on the way to the base. Rob Wigan's over. Not in time. Too much wow. speed. Corey White scores the ground ball down the third base line. Oh. Corey, Corey White. Speed. Corey White, is, uh, he's a burner. He's, he's one of the fastest players in the league. And for Wigan to make that play even close, that's impressive. Yeah, I very mean, nice play by Wygan. Wygan went now, all the way to the third base line and, make, and, and made that play a second after, a hair after uh, the Corey White hit that base. It looks like Bayou's done their homework on Corian as they're shifting Wygan from a left field two position to a left field three position. So let's see how this goes. Anyway, we got two in, two out. And the pitch to Corian fouled at the plate. So Corian is uh, only 16 years old. 16 years old. You can see the uh, the raw athleticism. Right. As is, <laughs> as does Corey, right? And Corian challenged anyone to race after this tournament. He's uh, that confident of his speed. <laughs> okay. Come on, man. <laughs> so we got one ball, two strikes to Corian. Just getting started here in the top of the first. Here's that easy ground ball right to Blake. Nothing Blake's up with, with it, and Ooh. he's gonna get it up. As he missed the base, Corian missed the base. He missed Three the base by like, left. oh my God, he missed the base by half mile. You can be fast, but you gotta be accurate. You gotta be accurate. 
That's too bad base running. That's too bad base running uh, for Indianapolis. Their lines aren't looking good. They're not getting out of the box well. Anyway, so uh, at the end of one half inning, Indy leads two to nothing over Bayou City Heat and Bayou coming to bat. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I would look. You have to consider that just a bit of a moral victory for Bayou after the first pitch of the game was blasted into center field by Rodriguez. I mean, to limit that half inning to two runs for Indy has got to be kind of a moral victory there for for the uh, Bayou City team. Totally agree. They got to feel good coming out. In Indianapolis, they you know. They had a lot of experience, even though they're young, right? I mean, the most, a lot of these guys played in two World Series already, so they know what they're doing. But they're young. They're excited. They're very confident. But they've had two bad bases. And in Boston, if you run bases like that, we put a blindfold of shame on you. <laughs> Is we, that the pink blindfold? The pink blindfold, oh, yeah. You gotta, if you run a bad base and you cost us a run, you got to put that pink blindfold on. We've had a little discussion around that pink blindfold this year because that pink blindfold's been around for about seven years and it's got Ooh, a lot of sweat in it. Funky. So yeah, it's a real punishment to have to wear it. it. Yeah, we're going to have to get a new one this year. The players are but You guys laundered that thing, right? It's not been laundered, no. <laughs> it's been disinfected. <laughs> Explain this if we spray some Febreze on it. Never mind. Let's set the uh, let's set the Indy Thunder defense here. We got Corian White playing right center field, the second base position at about 82 feet. We got Eric Rodriguez playing 85 feet on the left center field side, the shortstop. Uh, Zach Bueller is deep left center field for the Thunder. It's probably 145 feet. We'll get back to that later. Talk about how he can play at 140 foot and still cover that, you know, 170 foot arc. Outstanding. Uh, let's see. We've got Tyler Rodriguez playing uh, center left center field at about 130. First pitch to Wiley. Swung on a miss. I just like to make a comment. Look at the left side of the Indy Thunder. Look at their socks. Very colorful socks on those guys. All of them. Eric's got all pink. <laughs> Tyler's got a pink and a, I don't know what the heck that is. Turquoise? Turquoise, yeah. Bueller's got one pink, one turquoise. I don't know what that's all about. No. Fashion statement. <laughs> There's a line drive to center field, and Corey, uh, Corey White is over, can't make the play, and Corey Wiley puts Bayou City on the board. Wow. Making the score of two to one, Thunder. He overran it. White just overran it. He was there. He, he was actually, he didn't even go fast at it. He just took a couple steps over. He's quick, and he just kind of overran it and was slow to get to the ground. Didn't track that well. I was I'm a blast. Gonna say this. Coming into this game, do you think, Rob, that there was anybody besides the Bayou City Heat that thought Bayou could beat Indy coming into this game? I don't think so. I don't think anyone did except them. And here we are. That's why we play the games. It's early, very early. But a glimpse of hope for Bayou City with, with a good start. Yeah. Now batting Daryl Miner for the Bayou City Heat. Uh, and I'll finish rounding out the Indy defense in a sec. There's an easy ground ball into Rodriguez territory. Rodriguez is over for it and he's clean. Got some style points on that put out. <laughs> All hands, pretty nice job by Rodriguez. Getting some style points on an easy grounder. Yeah. You know, Miner's been in this game for a long time. I've been in this game for a long Kevin, you've been in this game a long time. I gotta say, I don't know these guys' age, but what Miner's gotta be in a starting with a four, right? Uh Daryl Miner, I believe. Let me check my records. Miner is on the order of forty-five years old. There you so. go. Two years younger than me. Yeah. It's gonna be hard to beat one Give of those balls off against a Urod. <laughs> now batting Seth Clark. Thank you. Nickname Bam Bam. Because he hits hard. <laughs> He's won some championships with uh, West Coast Dogs. He did indeed. He won championships in the year 1999, the year 2000, the year 2001. And, we'll get, and more in a sec. There's a line driving to left field. Rodriguez over, can't make the play. Bueller overruns the ball. Let's see if Seth can make it to the base. He does before Bueller can get it up, and we've got a tie ball game. Wow. So Rodriguez just went down, and he didn't line it up. 
He just did not line that ball up, and that girl went right by his feet. Sometimes, you know, he just didn't line up. That's a that's a tall order for a lawnmower like that. I mean, that was a that was a strong hit by Clark. It didn't get a lot of air time. It, you know, went about 60 feet on a rope. Rodriguez only had a chance to move over a step and get his legs out. That's about all he could do, Rob. I don't know. What do you want him to do, Rob? <laughs> I'd like to see him just take one step and fall. I felt like he fell like, fell like a tree. When you fall like a tree, the ball comes to your feet as opposed to stepping and trying to get that ball in the bread basket. But, hey, he's the best in the game. What do I know? I'm an offensive coach. Brings up Joseph Fleeks. Swing and a miss. <clears throat> Swing and a miss. No balls, one strike to Joseph Fleeks. Hey, Vice City's winning. 2-1. Here we go. Here's a line drive to center field off the handle. Rodriguez has it lined up. Tyler Rodriguez knocks it down, gets it up, and that's the second out of the inning. Nice play by Tyler Rodriguez. They hit the ball. I mean, there's barely any hit swings and misses in this that's game. Right. That's Both what you sides. expect out of, out of a championship game. That's what you expect. I mean, uh, consistent pitching, uh, contact early. Uh, okay. Nice play so far. Both sides. <clears throat> that brings up number nine, Lee Rodriguez, the left-handed hitter for the Bayou City Heat. This guy impressed me yesterday. I mean, he scored four or five runs against you guys, against San Antonio, hitting out of the five hole. That's right. And he was just bombing the ball. He Deadpool is. He's hitter. Having a, he's having a very good tournament. He was... He was an Offensive All-Tournament Award winner back in 1990. With, oh, my God. With the uh, with the Houston Bombers, who are now the Bayou City Heat. Here's the first pitch to Rodriguez. Fonzie missed that one. Not, not his best pitch so far. <laughs> He's allowed to miss every once in a Madrano. while. Fonzie Madrano, the pitcher for Bayou City. Dead pull hitter. They are playing, they're playing off the line quite a bit. Yeah. There's that easy ground ball, and it's foul. Off the right field side. Lee Rodriguez pretty much played his entire career in, in Houston. Now, he missed a handful of years from 1994 through 2001. But uh, Houston is Houston slash Bayou City. That's the only team he's been with. And, that's awesome. He sure is. Uh, he sure is hitting the ball well this year. Now he swung across his body that time as he's kind of. He's yeah, off balance. He's a little one time balance, he's falling backwards on the swing. One time he's falling forward over the plate on the swing. He's got to get his mechanics consistent. Yeah. He's not getting cheated on that swing though, Rob. No, nope, not at all. <laughs> no Bayou City Heat gets cheated on the swing. There's a pitch fouled at the plate. Staying alive. My God, Count goes 3 stays 3 His feet are all over the place. He's like dancing with those feet. That foot stepped in the bucket so hard. <laughs> hey, sometimes you get a little excited in these big games. Fonzie wheeling the ball in and out. Struck him out, and that retires the side. So after one inning, we've got Bayou City 2, Indy Thunder 2. I, I, you know, I've been giving Rodriguez a hard time. He was off. Thought it was his best swing. He, he gave. If I was just watching his feet, one swing he's in the bucket, one swing he's falling over the plate. That time he had bounce. You can't hit with bounce without bounce. You gotta have good balance to get it to hit the ball hard. Hey boys. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll finish setting the uh, we'll finish setting the Bayou City Heat defense. Uh, the spotter on the left field side is Janet Leonard, a, a veteran spotter of Wichita Sonics fame. 32 years she's been spotting. And that's the interesting thing, Kevin, you're talking about the spotters. Janet caught me before the game. I want to make sure we tell, give a shout out to Chelsea Hodges, who's on the right side. First year spotting championship game. Very, and she's done a very good job. They've, uh, when you're spotting defense, I guess we should explain to some of the, some of the, some of the ins and outs of beat baseball for those that are listening in for the first time. Each field, each uh, defense has uh, are allowed two spotters. That their purpose is to first set the defense into positions that they want. And the second is to call one number. They're allowed to call a number that corresponds with the zone that the ball is hit. 
Now, what Bayou City does a really nice job of, not only calling zones, uh, but they also call depths with voice inflection really well. They do a really good job of that. Yeah. So when it's a short ball, they'll kind of squeak it. Three. <laughs> and then a deep three sounds much different. It's like three. You know, really well. Anyway, they, Chelsea's done a really good job. All right, Tyler Rodriguez at the point now. The sixth hitter for the Indy Thunder. No yeah. outs, top of second. I got a chance to spend some time with Tyler before the game. He is a uh, All-American wrestler. <laughs> All-American high school wrestler. High school right? wrestler. As a blind, he's blind wrestling against sighted opponents, which is really impressive. 17 years old. He takes third out of 162 in one of his recent matches. There's a pass ball, so the count goes to one ball, two strikes to Tyler Rodriguez. He's planning to try out as a walk-on wrestler at Indiana University. There's a ground ball right to Blake Boudreau. Blake goes down, and he's got it. Room he's got service. it up. That's room service. That's room service. Room service. And he did not stop that ball at his ankles. Right in the belly. <laughs> Blake's got a good belly to stop that ball. I didn't say yeah. that. That was Rob Weissman that said that. I'm a bag of bones, Blake. I'm a bag of bones. Put in the air, buddy. Eric Rodriguez now to play for the Indy Thunder. The shortstop. Power hitter. How many all tournament teams does uh, has he been awarded? Uh, probably one in every year he's been playing, other than maybe his first year. I was in Bowling Brook last year, and he hit a perfect 1,000. It was like 19 for 19. Swung early, grounds one into left field. Blake's giving chase, Wygan's over, and can't make the play. Rodriguez scores on a nice guy. He's got a lot of speed, Rob. He really does. Fast. He is real fast. And that was a tweener right there. That was one that went by Blake, but didn't quite get to Rob. Yeah, there's almost a little, they had a little talk over there. I don't you know what their zone responsibilities are on this team. Blake definitely went a little far back, and I think Rob was surprised that he was there, and I think they both got tentative when they got close to each other. Hmm. I don't know if they would have gotten Rodriguez with his speed either way. Yeah, exactly. And I think, uh, I think the spotter actually helped call off an imminent collision between the defenders right there, and that's another job that the spotter would do is try to keep the player safe from... Uh, wandering in to zones now. Look, Bayou City and Indy, both of these teams understand the discipline of their defense. They're able to, uh, through a, you know many hours of practice, discern how far do I need to go to stay out of this guy's zone? How far do I need to go forward and back? All these stuff. That This has all worked out well in advance. Anyway, here's a, Gerald Dyke is at the plate, the designated hitter for the Indy Thunder. Count goes to no balls, one strike. Still early in this game, one out in the top of the second. So Dykus is 22 years old. He's the oldest player in the starting lineup. 22 years old, he's the oldest player in the starting lineup. Okay. How about that? Hey, look, the scary thing about the Thunder is that they just keep getting better, as if they weren't good enough last year. Bueller is now <laughs> really solid, you know, on defense, where, you know, he was solid last year. He was knocking balls down, but this year, man, he's clean. Oh, you know, by Dykus. They got a real close team. They hang out with each other off the field a ton. The coaches and the players, they just really are close-knit. They just live and breathe this sport, and it shows. Here's the 0-3 to Dykus. Swung on a miss. He struck him out swinging. You can hear that bat. You can hear that bat speed, and that is not a light bat that he is swinging. Is he? That's a 165-pound dude. I'm guessing, give or take, that could hit the ball 170 feet in the air. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> He's got a lot of power. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, Zach Bueller and his improvement on defense, and I'm going to tell you. He's made them. I mean, he just keep this whole team just keeps getting better. Bueller's a Paralympian goal ball player. I didn't know that. There's a foul ball at the plate. Count goes to no ball, one strike to Bueller. Early in the game, Indy leads three to two with two outs here in the top of the first. Top of the second. Top two. Sorry, top two. Top two. Time flies when we're having fun. That's right. Right. Swing and a miss by Bueller. Right. 
count goes up too. It's a foul ball to play. Count goes up three. As a pitcher, <laughs> I always hate three foul balls in a row, Rob. Going in, going into the fourth pitch with three foul balls. I mean, you threw three good pitches, maybe having only missed by a half an inch a piece. <laughs> and this will be a pass ball. Come on, man! Count goes full. What's, what's, what's your take ball? on pass balls? You let someone do a pass ball after that? No. Yeah. Here's a swing and a foul ball to play. Four fouls in a row. That's an at-bat. He's battling. He's seen everything Jared's got. Yeah. Fouled that off his front foot, just off the bottom of the bat. Here's a ground ball right to Boudreaux. Boudreaux's over, got it knocked down, and he's got it up. Bueller's retired. Wow. <clears throat> nice play by Boudreaux. He actually went feet first to that ball and uh, hit him in the shins, and he was able to get down and get that up before uh, Bueller got to the base. So one in for the Thunder. That takes the score to three to two after an inning and a half. Bayou City coming to plate. See, so that'll bring up Wygand, Wiley, and Miner. Did I get that right? Um, I'm, I'm, yep, yep, Wygand, Wiley, and Miner. <laughs> Bayou City heat, their bodies showing the <laughs> the soreness of a week full of beat balls. Now, if you want to prepare yourself for a week of beat baseball, it's a good start to get very physically fit. However, that is not going to prepare you for a week of beat ball. I think the only thing that could possibly prepare you that for that is to get into some car accidents, maybe roll down a hill, down some steps, you know, maybe get into a fist fight. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's an, it's, an, it's a way more uh, aggressive sport than the sport of baseball. I mean, you're, every play on the defense, you're throwing your body on the ground. You're hitting the base, and you're, you know, a lot of these guys are hitting the ground or hitting the base. It's just a, a much more physical, demanding game than the sport of baseball. And if you're a pitcher, you're standing 20 feet away from these guys. My pitcher got drilled about five or six times this week. And that's just in games. Getting drilled in BP is even worse. Pitchers get hit by the ball? Quite a bit. There's two types of pitchers in this league, Kevin. That's one thing you told me has stuck with me for years. You know that, right? Those who've been hit in the, um, the nads yeah. <laughs> and those who will. Uh, those who have and those who will get hit in the Rob Wygand at the plate. There's a line drive in the left field into Bueller territory. Tyler comes over, knocks it down, and he got it up. Nice play by Tyler Rodriguez wow. to cut that ball off from Bueller and get it up. Nice play. Tyler plays in that middle position. He's in the, the, the second layer of that defense, and he came from the middle of the field all the way down into uh, left center and just cut that ball off and made an amazing play. Way to get layers on that ball, right? Because if it missed if it missed Tyler, Zach was going to be there. Wygan is just money. I watched him play against you guys yesterday and it seemed like everything he hit went there. Everything. He's just consistent with that swing. Indeed. So that brings up the leadoff hitter for Bayou City, Ja'Cory Wiley. Wiley's going on the first pitch he saw, right? Now, he may not be as fast as Corey White, but he is definitely in the same class. Swung on a miss. He was a, he was a, a track star, an all-district track star at uh, Eisenhower High School in Houston. Swung on a miss, so too. His first year being 2001 with the Bayou City Heat. <laughs> He's got a lot of energy, a lot of, fun. A lot of speed, a lot of He's speed. Fast. Third pitch fell back. Okay, let's talk a little bit about, I don't know if it's Bayou City's philosophy. I always think it's their philosophy as an outsider, but they have these golf swings. And, you know, these golf swings are so difficult to defend. There's a high fly ball into right field. Corian White is over. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, he missed the base. Nice play by Corian White. Why they missed the base? Why they went right, went wide right of first base on that? Now what's interesting on that one is, uh, you know, with these golf swings, oftentimes when these balls go up in the air, they land with spin, and uh, there was no spin on that ball at all. That ball just stuck, 
And uh, Corian White just was able to track it, stay on his feet, keep the ball in front of him, picked it up. That was a great defensive play. Great defensive play. Normally, for the last three years, uh, I'm sorry, for, for the last two years, the staple of the Indianapolis Thunder defense has been Miguel Tello playing the uh, second field position, second base position. Now Miguel Tello is playing about 110 feet on the right field side, and I'm sure you know. Look, he's a fantastic defender, man, and he's clutch and he can get the ball up. He's clean with it, but it's kind of surprising to see Corian taking that position. I mean. Yeah, Booker told me earlier he, he he put this wrinkle out against the edge right before the World Series started. Here's a ball into right field. It's going to stay fair, it looks like. Corian's over for it, but can't, can't make the play cleanly, so Daryl Miner beats that one out. Hey, that's that golf as swing with spin, right? Just there as you were saying, Rob, that, that golf swing. Um, now, look, it requires a tremendous amount of practice to make that work. It requires a tremendous uh, a sense of timing between the pitcher and the batter. I mean, a synergy has to be developed between the two to make that work and, and Bayou City they, they put in a lot of work on their offense and pays off Daryl Miner there uh, you know a, a power hitter really I mean one of the one of the first guys to hit home runs I and mean, we're talking about he was hitting home runs back when the line was at 180 feet not you know nowadays the 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 home run line is at 170 feet which means if you hit the ball beyond that mark uh, it's considered a home run and uh, the other guy that has hit a home run at 180, the first one here is that bad, Seth Clark for Bayou City. Trying to break this 3-3 tie with one out here in the bottom of two. First pitch, a swung on and missed, just missed. Looks like the, the other thing, the other aspect that the golf type swing that Bayou City uses brings for the pitcher is not only do you have a high low aspect, you have to be, there's a left right aspect yeah. to being accurate with. There's a, there's a ground ball on the left field side. Eric Rodriguez goes back and over. Easy play for wow. Rodriguez. It's amazing how easy he makes that look. You see his footwork on that? You see his footwork on that play? It looked like he was kind of dancing, just kind of shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. He's just so quick after that ball. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Well played, by her. So after two innings, we have a 3-3 tie, and uh, Indy coming to bat, and that'll bring up the four hitter. Should be, well, should be Corey White, White yeah, right? Should, should be Corey White. Okay. Doing too much, having too much fun. I forget what Bueller did. Uh, Bueller grounded out straight to Blake Boudreaux. Oh, that's right. Can of corn. So that's four putouts so far by Blake. Is that is that correct? Three, four putouts. Yeah. And Eric Rodriguez has got to be getting pretty close to that as well. Eric. Talking about Eric Rodriguez a little bit more. He's got two. Two. Okay. Okay. Two putouts by Eric. I mean, I'm, <laughs> when when Eric can go to, a, I mean, that ball was 100 feet when he knocked it down. I mean, to go from 85 feet from directly in center field to 100 feet on the baseline and get the ball up in about four seconds is uh, one I mean, of the best in the game. He makes it look routine. It's one of the best in the game. It's an exceptional play. It makes it look easy. So it's his Z-axis, the uh, <laughs> the ability not only to go side to side, but the ability to, to track uh, the depth of the hit based on how it sounds off the bat you know, and how quickly it gets to the 40-foot line to, to determine his angle. On, yeah, I'd, I'm not sure there's anybody better in the league at doing that. It's the best I've the best I've probably ever seen it uh, on the Z axis. So uh, props to Eric. He's really worked hard at being a standout defender. You know, I was talking to some of the the Indy Thunder, and and they were telling me that uh, they really credit uh, learning how to play defense from the Chicago Comets when they had an opportunity to play with the Comets for the first couple of years of their uh, their playing time. Yeah. Corey White swings and misses the first pitch. And that's a common thread with a lot of the players that are in the Midwest. David Benny, a uh, San Antonio Jed, gives a lot of credit uh, for his ability to hit the ball to JT Herzog. Here's a, another foul ball at the plate. Right, JT Herzog I, I being the coach this. of the. Uh, go I ahead, gotta Rob, stop. Go ahead. I'm a catcher. <laughs> There's now been two foul balls Avery has not made plays on. Give me a break. Dude. <laughs> Back to JT Herzog. <laughs> 
JT Herzog, a, a great teacher of you know baseball and the game itself, somehow taught David Benny, a 110 pound guy, to be able to hit the ball 120 in the air. That's <laughs> pound for pound. Yeah. <laughs> JT Herzog's a, it's a high fly ball on the short spin. field. Is it going to spin back? It is going to stay foul. <laughs> the funny thing is, by the time it hit the ground, Corey White was two steps from the base. Is that is that fair? That's very fair. And depending on which team you're on, you're not thinking that's funny. If you're Bayou City, you're not thinking that's funny. <laughs> Although you're happy that he at least had to run 100 feet and then has to come back and hit again because it's foul. If, if he keeps doing that, then, Rob, they're going to make a mark that says, you can't cross this mark here before the ball gets oh to the God. ground. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. It's, 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 you just can't beat speed when the ball goes up in the air like that, unless he misses the base. Cliff Gustafson said, "Speed never has a bad day." Yeah. Unless you miss the base. <laughs> There's a pass ball by Corey. Come on, man. Bringing a count to 03. I think that's to get his win back. That's <laughs> all just to give him to get his win back. Ooh, just got a piece of that one to stay alive at one ball, three strikes. Corey's hitting out of an open stance. I've seen him hit a lot of balls down the third base line. There it goes, right down the third base line. Yeah, that ball is dead as a door now. They're going to need to replace that. That be What? I'm wrong. Well, yeah, no, no, no. Change <laughs> pitch. That's $35. If anyone would like to make a donation to the league, that will help pay for that cost of that ball. Well, interesting. They played with the whole first couple innings with the sticker still on the ball. Our stickers never stayed on. They came off every day. Man, you must have got the good balls. The balls we got without the stickers, they died right away. <laughs> Look, they, I'm just going to say, you know, the, the beat balls, they don't seem to take well. I mean, when you have the beat balls, you definitely need to store them inside your house and not in the garage. We learned that the hard way down in Texas. If you store them in your garage, they don't respond well to a lot of heat. High fly ball in the oh short God, left field, and over comes Blake, and he's not going to be able to get that one. <laughs> that ball bounced. Blake's about 6'2", maybe 6'3". That ball bounced over his head when it hit the ground. He actually almost touched it with his hand as his hands are flailing in the air, wondering where it was. Yeah, nice fly ball, and it, uh, <laughs> it's not easy to, to make Blake look lost on defense, but that one, that one was really high, bounced behind Blake, over his head some more, too far away. Blake made a nice play to get on it, but just not in time. I mean, that is a, that is a prototype beat ball hit. Airtime is really important to getting you to the base, especially with the, the defenses that, you know, today's beat ball teams possess. I mean... You have to be able to get it in the air. Ground balls are just not going to work today. Not a championship game, Kevin. Corey on right swings and misses the first pitch from Jared Woodard. Count goes no balls, one strike. Well, I want to go back to catchers, and I'll tell you a little more serious. Uh, we had a big injury this week. I heard that one of the catchers from St. Louis. No? Want to talk about that? Here's that. All right. Oh, good <laughs> <laughs> it's well, a look, foul back. Corian swinging, and when he swings, he's got he's releasing the bat with one hand, kind of Walt Riniac style. Walt baseball. Riniac style. Well Walt done. Riniac. White, the old White Sox. See, he was White Sox. I know. I remember him as the White Sox. He had an instructor uh, in the Ozzy Guillen years. Oh three. But I think you know when you're swinging like that, if your timing's off, it's, he's going to go all right field. It's going to be hard to take him to left field unless his timing's perfect. I haven't seen him hit often, so I don't know if, if that's true for him or not, but it looks like he's going to be, you know, right side. Zach Rambilu, <laughs> probably the best hitter in the world, releases his left hand with Greeniac style, so it can be done. It can be done. That's impressive. He is a good hitter. Corian fouls one at the plate. Oh, oh, two. <laughs> so in the top of the third, the score is, we got 5-3, Rob. Is that, one, is that two, the score? It's 5-3. Three. Three. I got four. You got four? four? Okay. I got four, three. Okay. We got, we got okay. conflicting numbers? No, 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 no. My, my, my mistake. Okay. I missed the batter there. Okay. Going on. There's a ground ball just past the 40-foot line. Blake is coming up for it. He's going to get it up in time. Corian wide of the base again. Missed it. Missed it again. He also had a problem getting out of the base, out of the batter's box. You know, these batter's boxes are a little slick. 
They've been putting sand in them, and sometimes it's, you, you just, when you try to push out of the batter's box, you lose your balance, and that's what happened to him. This would be a good time to recognize uh, Mike Finn um, of West Coast Dogs and Austin Blackhawks fame for uh, his induction to the Hall of Fame last year. And that's the one thing about Mike Finn. He may not be on the same class in a you know a hundred foot dash with the with Corian, but the reason why he is the best base runner in beatball is that he always runs straight to the base, no deviations. You know, there's a ground ball from Tyler Rodriguez, right, to Blake Boudreaux. Boudreaux's going to get this one. Oh, he's got him out again. There's a two outs in the inning after Corey White scores to take the lead. Bayou City's giving two ground balls straight to uh, Blake Boudreaux. And now Jared Woodard's out having a word with Blake Boudreaux. Don't know what that was about. Jared doesn't look happy. Uh, I think we're gonna take Blake Boudreaux here. <laughs> if I had to guess, if I was, oh yeah, here we go. It's on now. What the hell happened? What happened? I think they're gonna. I think they're considering changing a blindfold here or patching a, a player. Well, you know, on that uh, play, I thought it was interesting. Blake came in and he hit the ground, kind of like a, an airplane crash. He hit the ground <laughs> and he just, and he kind of stuck, and the ball was like four or five feet in front of him. Then he had to kind of get up and get the ball again. And I wonder. I don't know. Could his blindfold have has uh, shifted when he when he hit the ground on that plane crash? I don't know. Umpire, is that Kemp? Is Kemp the umpire? Kemp Price being the umpire of the game. They are patching. Him. Oh, we're gonna mindfold Blake Boudreaux. Are they mindfolding or patching? Not, no patches yet. We're gonna mindfold him. Yeah, baby. I don't know. So. Let's see. We'll take a break for just a second, Rob. And find out what's going on. Get you guys clued in. Well, Jared came over and spoke to Parker. John Parker's one of the coaches and for Bayou City. They had a calm discussion about it. I don't know. How many ounces Blake got? Blake's got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, if you're left shorty, the guy up front on the left side's making all your putouts. That means the other team's offense ain't hitting the ball that well. A lot of grounders. There's a lot of grounders off the off the bats of uh, of Indy. <clears throat> Do they put them on it? Uh, they're gonna fit Blake with a mindfold here. Uh, I'm not sure what blindfold he's using currently, but they're going to they're gonna switch blindfolds just to make sure this is all above water here. Hey, why don't we uh, take a moment to uh, talk through some of the uh, results of the uh, series this year. Absolutely. All right, Go right so, ahead, Rob. So unofficially, you know, obviously the winner of this game gets one, the loser gets two. Um, San Antonio Jets finished the uh, tournament in third place. E and D Edge. There you go. Congratulations, Kevin. Oops, sorry. I don't know if congratulations are in order there. I mean, if you would Hey, top uh, three. I, you know, fall, 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 fall short of uh, our goal. Our goal was definitely to be playing today. I wish we were, just weren't good enough. Hey, you know, it was better. You guys are... It's only been this late a few years, and what you guys have done with your team in that few years is uh, is pretty much unheard of. Very few teams have formed up and, and, and been as good as you guys as quickly as you guys have gotten there. Uh, the Indy Edge finished in fourth. Uh, my squad, the Boston Renegades, finished fifth. Well and I'll, done, well and I'll say the exact same thing Kevin did. I'm like, oh, I don't know, that's where I wanted to be, but we're we're uh, we're happy to win our last game and be top five. Uh, Austin Blackhawks uh, took sixth. Colorado Storm took seventh. Tyler Tigers took eighth. I think that might be the, one of their first top ten finishes ever. Uh, their pitcher, LZ, had a fantastic tournament. I mean, if you had to give an award, if they had an award for most improved pitcher, that is, uh, that is hands down the winner of this year's World Series. He improved so much with those guys. And, and they've got athletes, Rob. I mean, they're for real. They're yeah. a legitimate team. They play... Uh, they, they need some improvements on defense. They, uh, however, their offense, they're a, they're a worthy opponent now, Rob. They're gone are the days where Tyler's finishing in the bottom half. 
they're uh, they're in the top half now and trending upward. Ronald yeah. Jordan, uh, Jason Gainey, Jason Gainey. Yeah. yeah, they got some speed on that team. They got those golf swings kicking. They get the ball up in the air for sure. This is uh, and Prince paying us a visit. Check on the equipment. We okay? We're just getting a little fuzz. Either touching the connection or bumping the antenna. We're good. All right. All right. Last team we'll talk about. Last team we'll talk about the Chicago Comets. They finished in ninth, and we'll come back to the standings at the next chance we get. There's a pitch to leadoff hitter Eric Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Now the time, the delay was to add a give Blake Boudreaux a new blindfold. And let's see, let's see how this goes. Rodriguez is uh, two for two. He's got two runs on this game. He let off that game with a blast. The second one was a ground ball, a lawnmower down the baseline that he beat out. Oh my God. High fly ball into deep center field. Bounces by Miner. Wygans no over, chance. can't make the play. Wow. How does a guy moonshot? Just a beast. Rodriguez is a beast. Eric Rodriguez with another run. You can see why he's the leadoff hitter, Rob. My God. Now batting number 10, the designated hitter, Gerald Dykus. Where can I get one like that for my team? They don't grow Impressive. on trees. They don't grow on trees. They grow in Indiana, apparently. You can, you can, <laughs> you can teach somebody uh, the form like that. But you can't teach him the power. That is, uh, he's got a lot of strength, got a great form, and he's got a lot of speed. It's a combination, and he's consistent. It's, uh, it's a deadly combination for a leadoff hitter. So that's going to bring up Gerald Dykus. He's 0 for 2. He uh, grounded out to Blake and struck out. So the score here in the top of the third is five to three, Thunder. There's a ground ball in the right center field. Joseph Fleeks has it lined up, and he's got it up. Yeah. Well, nice play by Fleeks. Nice play. <laughs> nice play. That retires the side. So after two and a half, it's Thunder five, Bayou City, Bayou City three, three. And uh, there goes the Vegas line on the over-under for a run agree. roll that was probably set at three. I mean, if you asked, if you took a poll you know, of everybody in the league to see what inning, not who would win, Rob, not who would win, Rob, but what inning would Bayou City be under the run roll? I think the standard answer would be plus or minus three innings. Yeah, well, it <laughs> took them five to do it the first time they played, so... I don't know. Hey, so, Bayou City's got hope. That's right. So not only is Bayou City, not only is Bayou City uh, exceeded that expectation, they're only two runs away from tying this game here in the And they're the home third. team. Absolutely. Now look, <laughs> the Indy Thunder defense is um, <laughs> the best in the league. <laughs> I mean, they uh, they have talent and ability at we every delay. position. We're gonna. We're gonna get a rain delay here. Is it a rain delay or a lightning delay or a patching delay? What do you think? It's a patching delay. Oh man, do I hate this rule. We're patching, patching? I think we're patching. All right, all right. I am not a fan of this rule, Kevin. I just think that, you know, you're gonna patch somebody. You gotta have reason. Don't start patching people to play head games. And I'm not accusing anyone of doing that right now. And I don't know what the reasoning is, but I don't know. I'm not a fan. <laughs> Let's run down the rest of the. Uh, oh yeah, good time to do that. Chicago Comets. You know, I just want to throw some love. And, you know, I mean, you think about the Chicago Comets for a second. They they started with Tyler Rodriguez, Eric Rodriguez, and Corey White, and they taught them all that. You know, they started there their first couple of years. 2013, yeah. that time frame. Yeah, and you know, you spend as a coach, you teach all these kids, and those kids are still appreciative of all the things that they learned with the Chicago Comets. But sure, her sure hurts your squad when you lose three of those type of talent. Yeah. So the Chicago Comets finished ninth this year um, uh, in this year's World Series. 
Philadelphia Fire. I'm an East Coast guy. I've uh, seen this team for a long time. I think they're pretty surprised. I think they surprised a lot of people finishing top 10 this year. Um, didn't surprise me. Uh, they got a real small roster in Philadelphia. Um, their pitcher's not that experienced. Um, his name is uh, Dom Natoli, not that experienced over there. Um, but they got a mix of guys that used to play for Colorado, Kevin, uh, Mike Coughlin, John Margist, uh, Dan Kelly, who's Rob Wygan's ex-teammate uh, from the Columbus Vipers, plays on that team. So a mix of uh, some experience with some, some real youth in their coaching staff. Um, and they got a top 10 seed. Uh, number 11, uh, Minnesota Millers. Minnesota um, Millers. Minnesota Millers. That is, uh, I tell you what, that is a, that is a, that is a nice team. Uh, we, we didn't get to, uh, my team, for the first time in a long time, I didn't uh, get to play those guys this year. Historically, that is a, uh, that is a really tough team to put away. They, uh, they will fight you to the end. They're not, they've got a really solid, solid defense. They don't, they don't have an explosive offense, but they have solid pitching. Dan. Dan's come a long way. Yes, absolutely. He's uh, he is he gets the ball on their bat, so they put pressure on you to play defense, and their defense, uh, in turn, they play really good team defense and really strong on the left side of that defense with Evan Van Dyne. Evan and Josh, Van Dyne, I can't pronounce his name. Zong, I think it starts with yeah. an X. Yeah. Josh Zong, two really strong guys on the left side on that team, and they led them. Uh, and they got 11th place. Uh, in 12th place was uh, the St. Louis Firing Squad. I didn't get a chance to see them this week, did you? I, I didn't get to see them this week. We, we did get to see them in a regional tournament. That is uh, definitely an up-and-coming team. Uh, they've got a lot of talent. Uh, Deontay, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just like Garrick Scott is. Uh, he's the standout, and and they've got uh, they got a talented infield. They've got talent in the outfield, and uh, and I, I don't want to use nicknames because that's all I remember. But uh, Chubby over there, um, and I'm, uh, his name is escaping me right. He's gonna kill me, but uh, he's a big guy that can hit with power and run. I mean, his average on contact is among the elites in the league. I mean, when he hits the ball, he gets the base. He's very difficult to be, he's a difficult out. Now, I like that team. It's one of, it's one of my favorite teams in the league. I mean, it's, uh, it's good to know. Cartels Hill, the pitcher, is always improving, makes strides every year. Well, speaking of a team that's improving, the New Jersey Titans, I know they're not happy with a 13 finish. I know they're not happy. They faced the Minnesota Millers, I think, twice. Minnesota got them twice. Um, that's an up-and-coming team. Uh, they got a first-year pitcher there. Um, He's been pitching six months. Six months. He's, we faced them, and when they get hot, they can hit. They're very streaky offensively. They've come a long way. Um, they've got some uh, some experience. It's not just a new team. They've got you know they've been here. They've got some experience from players. Actually, a couple of players from Philadelphia before the season even started jumped over the Titans. And Scott Hogwood and Randy George, two starters for that team, jumped over, started playing with the Titans this year. And uh, so you know I think that team's got to watch out. They work hard. They work hard. They work year round, which is not easy to do in New Jersey during the winter. Uh, 14, team that really impressed me. I hadn't seen them play BCS Outlaws. I hadn't seen them play. Uh, you know, my team finished fifth. We played a four to two game against them. And I'm, uh, you know, we played a lot of our starters against them. They play some defense. Yes, they, they do. They flash the defense. Absolutely. Justin Romack, and, and they've added Jason Walters this year, a former San Antonio Jet who can hit and play defense and run well. And uh, they've got, a, let's see, Drew, uh, they've got Andrew the, the, of uh, Lone Star fame, Burnett, yep. Drew Burnett. And uh, they've got a... Uh, 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 Hillary House, uh, she's she plays the third base line for those guys. I think she got married. I think she goes by Hillary Oswald now. I'm so sorry. Yeah, but I yeah. but it's weird. Sometimes I see her on the line of Carter's house, and sometimes I see her on the line of Carter's Oswald. Maybe she doesn't pick the name yet, <laughs> or maybe she's a hyphen. I don't know. I don't know that either. But I do know this: she's uh, she's a she's, she's a threat to score. She can she can hit the ball really well. I think she she's can run well. This she's top a good two female hey, we players in the league. Totally agree. Can agree more. So. But let's get we've also got, uh, a very warm welcome got, uh, to Peter and Keith with Jersey Mike's because they've been with us for so many years. Give it up! Stan Trapp on the know mic. Where you are, but we've got a good relationship with the Outlaws in San Antonio. We'll we scrimmage with them off, off, you know, uh, often, <laughs> and uh, to see their improvement, it's uh, it's surprising they. Fin I'll be honest with you, I'm surprised they finished low as 14. I expected them in the nine to 12. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes it's just who you play in this yeah. tournament, and you know, it's not. 
Kevin and I, we've talked a lot about seating. this over the years. Seatings seating. aren't necessarily done appropriately. Regional matchups, and, yeah. seating. <laughs> so sometimes where you finish isn't necessarily where you really are in, in the in the in the world, but that's just the way the league works. We can talk more about that later. Eventually, <laughs> you're gonna have to play, you know, everybody, you know, to get to the championship. However, I mean, just just to complain, our yep. first <laughs> our first five games, three of those were against Texas teams. You know, we played every Texas team in the World Series. And when I say we, I say San Antonio (laughs) Jets. Uh, We got to play, um, you know, two in our bracket, which was the Lone Star team, which is from the Dallas-Fort Worth, made up of players from the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, and we got to play the Tyler team. And then uh, two games later, we're playing the Austin team, you know, a team that's 60 miles away. So, I mean, anyway, just a just a plug for maybe having a seating. Hey, committee. We're the same place. My bracket was uh, was Toronto, which we never played. Was fair enough. But we also played Philadelphia and Long Island. We play them every year, all the time. So there's some, we got some opportunities to make some change, people. And, you know, as someone who comes, not every team's got a chance to win this World Series. They may have hopes and dreams, but reality is not every team's going to do it. And, you know, and as a coach, you got to set a goal. And, and being able to, to set a seed and try to improve your seed every year is, is, is a great way to motivate your team. And it's hard to do it when, when things aren't necessarily seeded appropriately. Speaking of things, Long Island... Long Island Bombers, they finished 15th. That surprised me. But I'll tell you, they had some problems before this. There's actually one of their volunteers, Joe Pavogo, right there. <laughs> um, one of their, they have two pitchers, and uh, one of their pitchers, uh, and I hope he's feeling better. He couldn't make the trip right before the World Series came down with vertigo, is what I heard. So, uh, James, if you listen, we, uh, we're hoping that you're feeling better. Yeah, James, get better. Uh, just kind of a an unknown fact in Beatball Land is uh, the pitcher for Long Island is uh, James Mazza. And uh, his, he got involved in beat baseball for Long Island through his relationship with the Renegades. Because uh, Dave Mazza um, went to high school and is good friends with uh, one of my players, Joe McCormick. And uh, his family, the Mazza family, they donate their batting cages to my team during the winter to allow us to hit. They got family batting cages and, and we use their batting cages, which is just a tremendous donation from that Mazza family. Um, so we'll come back to the standings afterwards. We are back to action. Back to action. And Joseph Fleets is now going patch? to be. <laughs> the patching even, battle is over. I didn't even pay attention. Joe Fleeks at the plate now for Bayou City. He made the last put out on defense uh, against Gerald Dykus to end the top of the third inning. Now the former high school quarterback stands in, swings and misses at the first pitch. It's another pass ball. High school dual threat quarterback. And, and Quarter? Quarterback. Quarter, as in throws Throwing the ball, ball and wins the ball. It's interesting. Throwing's not any part of this sport. Got a big guy with a lot of speed. And he's got some power at the plate. Trying to dial it in with Fonzie. And cut into this 5-3 lead. <clears throat> Six is 0 for 1. Uh, his first at bat, he uh, Tyler Rodriguez put him out. Yeah, he had a nice one to Bueller that he cut off. Is that? Yep. No balls. Two strikes to Fleeks. Big right-hander swings and misses. Fleeks is wearing cargo shorts. <laughs> I'm just pointing that out. He's wearing cargo shorts. Yeah, you know, some of our audience is listening in. They can't see it. Just want to point out that stuff. It's fun. Why not? There's a line drive to left center field. Gets by Rodriguez. Ooh. Tyler can't make the play. Gets by Bueller. And he's to base. Nice shot. That's a lawnmower. Rodriguez came in real hot on that. He came real hard. He came, he charged into that play. And he just, the momentum just took him sliding by the ball. Tyler, I, yeah. When you, when you see something like that, you wonder if maybe the call was off. In their defense, it may very well have been because Rodriguez, who plays in center field, Tyler Rodriguez, overran, and Bueller was short by a little bit, which may lend itself to what you were saying, a spot that may not have been perfect. Um, look, I mean, that's that's got to be a hard one because... You gotta get a number out so fast. You have to get a number out in less than a half a second. And uh, otherwise the balls, and in this case, the ball was by Tyler Rodriguez in three quarters of a second. So it's an absolute lawnmower. That brings up Wee Rodriguez. 
Swing Throw some there. shout out to these spotters. It's uh, we have uh, Lisa Wright on the left side, Mariah Brown on the right side. I believe they won the spotter award last year, right? Yes, absolutely. They're two of the best and in the game. The year before that. <laughs> yeah, two of the best in the game. All right, Rodriguez. Uh, he struck out his first time. Let's see if he keeps his better balance this time. Yep, sure did. Yep, better balance. Bounce is all about, you gotta have good balance. If you don't, you're gonna be inconsistent. Get some instruction from Fonzie Medrano, the pitcher <coughs> for Bayou City. Fonzie working fast. How long has he been pitching? He's been pitching since 1990. It was a short fly ball off the fist into Corian on white in. territory. It's an easy play for Corian, and that's the first out of the inning. <clears throat> nice play by Corian. And that's uh, one out here in the bottom of the third with Indy leading 5-4. to four. Brings up the sixth hitter for the Heat, number 21, Rob Wigan. Let's talk about that hit for a second. So that caught off kind of the top of Lee's bat and had a lot of backspin. So when I hit the ground, that actually spun back towards the 40-foot arc. And I think that's, um, you know, Corian missed a play earlier on a spinner uh, that spun towards the line. He's 16 years old, you know. It's good for him to get get that get that first put out early in this game. Yeah, agreed. This, uh, but that ball, that ball, that's his second put out, by the way, Rob. So the second. Gonna go ahead and correct your idea. Oh, <laughs> he made it. Oh, it's ready to go, Wiley. Sorry, my bad. So here's one. Pitch, swing and a miss. Just missed by Fonzie. They're on it. No balls and a strike. Rob Wigand to. Uh, Got his beat ball start with uh, the Cleveland Scrappers back in 1993. My God. There's a right ball side. into right center field. Corey Wide's got it lined up. Oh, it gets by him. He can't make the play. All right, well, here's what I saw on that. So we got Tello now. He's in a new position, right? So Tello's playing in the mid position. And Corey White was kind of on a knee waiting for Tello to come by. Tello came screaming by, and White was already on the ground before Tello came screaming by. And sometimes, as that deep layer, you're waiting to hear something from that second guy. Maybe he hit. Maybe White hit the ground a little too early. Maybe. Regardless, he was just off his fingertips, and Wygan ties the score at five. Bringing up Ja'Cory Wiley, the leadoff hitter for Bayou City. You know, it's clutch to get a run out of your six hitter. Wiley, I mean, uh, Wiley's got a book available on Amazon.com, and the book is titled "Vision to Dream." Available on Amazon, anyway. So, quite an accomplishment for this young man, 26 years old, skinny guy with a lot of speed and a quick bat. One for two. Wow. Swing and a miss. You can hear that bat hum. Yeah, hum. Took a little bit longer stride than Fonzie did. Fonzie, you could tell by the look on his face, did not like what he saw from Wiley on that swing. It looked like he overstrode. Maybe a little bit pumped up here with the tie, Scott, tie score. <laughs> Fonzie, and as a pitcher, you got your choice. You can correct the batter or just go ahead and make the adjustment. In this case, uh, clearly Fonzie is going to make the adjustment himself. You got to keep the confidence of the hitter up. Once the hitter loses their confidence, it's 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 a battle. So even if they're not doing what you want, you got to make them feel like they are, right? That's right. Exactly right. If you got to make the decision whether you're going to correct this yourself as a pitcher, or there's a fly ball right field foul. Is that a blind guy? Oh no! Jeez, I thought it was one of their players that caught that ball in the air. That's J.C. Carter. Oh my God. J.C. Carter, the coach for Bayou City, with a nice catch. <laughs> Now he was a he is a, a college football player, J.C. Carter. I can see that by looking at him. He's defensive tackle for North Texas. Wow, he's yeah. got the size. He got a big chest. All district uh, standout <clears throat> defensive tackle, big guy. He's been around since 2001. Here's a pitch to Wiley, fouled off again. J.C. can't make that play. <laughs> You're not gonna make that one, no. Yes, yeah, you know. Looking for that spinner on that right side. He's got a. He's getting that bat. He's gonna know on the right side of that bat with that golf swing, and it's spinning. So I'm trying to fix just a slight timing issue. And like I said before, you know, uh, with the golf swing, there's two components. There are two components. There's a there's a left right, and there's a high and low. And if you throw the ball too far left on a right-handed hitter, it will go foul. 
like it did there. Do you see that, Rob? Yeah. yeah. Where the uh, the left the the, the high low component is on, the left right component is slightly just on. missed, and yeah. the, that's what gives it. That's the that's the argument against the golf type swing, is it requires a lot of consistency. There's a ground ball into oh, Rodriguez territory. Struggles getting out of the box. Rodriguez is over. Called oh, it up off his body as he. Rodriguez just overran that ball by about six inches. And he couldn't get it up under his body. It was still, it was still pinned. It was still pinned to his body as he over overslid it just a hair. That's and the speed of Wiley made I mean, it pay. And he almost fell coming out of the batter's box. I mean, his first step out of the box, he stumbled coming out of the sand, and he was able to keep his balance and get down the line and, and beat Rodriguez. That's just some impressive speed. We All talked right. about his speed earlier. All right, raise your hand if you thought Bayou City would have the lead at the end of three. Yeah, I don't think well, that's exactly what's going on. They lead 6-5 here, Rob, with one out here in the uh, bottom of three. Quite a shocker. And that you know was said in the making, huh? When's the last time Indianapolis lost a game? That I know. <laughs> Go ahead. San Antonio Jets, 2017, Thursday. Well, sometimes you find out what you're made out of when you're losing. No! It's easy to win. Oh, high fly ball into right field by Daryl Miner. It's going to land right behind Corian. Miguel Tello's got a chance. He's, got He's clean. Miguel Tello. Nice play by Tello. We call that on Boston two bounce and pounce. That ball was way up in the air. It landed over Corian's head, and Tello kept it in front of it. He listened to it bounce twice and picked it up. Absolutely. And Daryl Miner. Yeah, absolutely. And that wasn't one of those plays where you just, you know, stand in the right place and it just bounces to you. This is a play that Tello had to range to his right at least 20 feet to, to get in position for. Very nice play and more importantly once he got to it he was clean with it able to get it up. His minor is you know as he ages he's not as fast as he want, want, once was but certainly not a slow base runner. So yeah. nice nice play by Tello. Second out of the inning. So that brings up the third hitter, Seth Clark. I'm sorry. Going Rob. back to the, the golf swing here, I'm just curious as your opinion. Do you like the bottle bats when you guys got golf, golf swings? You know, those that has no, you know, barrel the entire way to the handle. Does it make a difference? <laughs> What's your opinion? I'll address that. First pitch to Clark, though, is fly. Oh. High fly ball in the left center field. Now, Bueller's got a chance, but it bounces over him. Seth slow to the base, but still in time. Still in time to score the run as Bueller got it just a quarter second too late. Yeah, Bueller made that play well beyond the 170 line. But uh, Bam Bam's got some uh, some some of my old man legs, and uh, he's a little slow. But when you hit it that far, look, he he got to now the bases in beat ball are 100 feet from from home plate. His first 90 wasn't bad. Now he airplaned and slowed down to make oh, sure he could get that. the base okay. in the last 10, which uh, actually made that play a little bit closer than it should have been. It was a hell of a hit by Bam Bam. Yeah, a hell of a hit by Bam Bam, and that ball probably landed it at 165, 168 feet. Bounced over Bueller. <clears throat> Uh, so two things here. One thing, I want to circle back to how Bueller was able to contest that play uh, based on the spotting by the Thunder. I want to get your, because I know nobody's better than Boston at that. I want to get your opinion. Back to the bottle bat, though, for just a second. I want bottle bats because I'm just not very accurate in now. <laughs> Joseph Fleeks. High fly Ooh. ball to center field. It's going to bounce behind Tyler. And that's the weak spot of that defense. Mueller's yeah. over there oh, made crap. a clean play. But Fleeks, who runs well, is safe. That's four runs in in the inning. Oh. Now batting of nine, Lee Rodriguez. Great play by Zach Pueller on that to range. I mean, okay, if I've if screwed up my Indy, score sheet in a big way. <laughs> if Indy, if Indy does have a weakness on defense, it would be deep middle. It's a long way for Corian White to go, who plays deep right center. It's a long way for Bueller to go, who plays deep left center. That's look. You've only got six players. You got a lot of real estate to cover. You got to pick what you're going to leave open. You know what I mean? And <laughs> if that's their weak spot, it requires a lot of speed and a bomb like that to just barely score. <laughs> and that is a solid defense. 
Lee Rodriguez at the plate. So we'll kind of touch on some of those topics we hit on earlier. Let's get back to the action now. Rodriguez, he's on it now. Finally, finally, it looks like they've got their issues worked out. It looks like, uh, looks like they're on target. <clears throat> Tello playing the left field two position. There's a nice line drive oh. down the first base line. It's, it's going to roll a while. Tello's on it. Oh, Tello made a hell of an effort. Tello made the play just not in time. And the speed by Rodriguez, he still runs well. He's able to get to the base in time. Right. Kevin, I gotta get up. I screwed up my score sheet so bad. I just want to go get it fixed so I can help the viewers. <laughs> no worries. No worries. I'll. Uh... <clears throat> I'll take over while Rob fixes the uh, score sheet. We do know this, that the Bayou City Heat are, are now in the lead of this game. I would not necessarily say they have it under control just yet, as the Thunder has a very dangerous team. But safe to say that the Thunder... <clears throat> the Thunder... Uh, the Thunder has a hill to climb now. So that brings up Rob Wigand, the six hole hitter for the Bayou City Heat. First pitch. Short fly ball is not going to make the foul line, and that's going to go foul. Bring the count. No balls, one strike. Wait, I'm quite certain nobody expected uh, at this point in the game for Bayou City to have the score of ND nearly doubled. It's <laughs> 9 to 5, yeah. And he's got a gut check. Hey, Indy, Indy had this problem last year. They lost to Taiwan in the first game of the championship game. And they came back and won the second game. Uh, no, sir. The, the <laughs> I got it wrong. The San Antonio Jets no! put the... Oh, there's a line drive right up the middle. Tyler Rodriguez is going to range over and can't make the play. Yeah! Couldn't get the ball up. Just couldn't get the ball up. Not clean with that one. Uh, what I think, would normally I think be? Might have stole it. it. Looks like Bueller might have stole it from him. Bueller came up with the ball. That's uh, Corey, oh, Corey, Corey White. Corey, Corey, yeah, Corey. From uh, came from right center field. Tyler's stretching out. Tyler's checking out his Anchor. left leg. He may have an issue. May have an injury. Timeout. That may go. Uh, yeah, that may explain. Uh, why did it get usually an easy? I mean, Tyler Rodriguez is a very solid defender for Indy. Obviously, playing one of the. One of the prime positions uh, for uh, the Thunder, in Tyler Rodriguez. Tyler Rodriguez, yeah. So, uh, Nora, I mean, really solid player. Um, goes over to the middle, can't come up with the uh, what would be considered a routine grounder. And uh, by uh, by Rob Wigand, so that's going to turn the order. That's a big play in this game, potentially. Um, what, what do you have, Rob? Do we, do we have one or two outs? I'm, uh, we got two outs. We got two outs. Okay, Miner was put out, and Rodriguez was put out. Okay. Okay. Very in the, well. In the first through first trip to New York. Now we're in the second time. So last year, um, actually, the Thunder had to win 11 games to go through the tournament. As they were defeated first thing Thursday morning, and they had to go all the way through. And I'm going to tell you what. Um, I just happened. To, I just happened to be. And, and let me tell you, that was that was one of the goodiest performances. Even though they were the favorite to win the tournament last year, the fact that they won it in the in the manner that they did was one of the the gutsiest performance I've ever seen. Now, I did see the Indy Thunder getting out of the team van at the hotel on Friday after, you know, they had to go through three games, including, um, you know, beating uh, Colorado and beating San Antonio. I mean, these are quality teams. And, and if you saw them getting out of the van, Eric Rodriguez, I remember he, he got out of that van so stiff, Rob. And he was like, oh. He was like, oh. It was, and then uh, to come back the next day and double dip Taiwan, um, quite an accomplishment. Yeah. Quite an accomplishment. Um, it had been easy. I mean, 11 games, Rob. Impressive. It, it, you know, to, to lose, you know, basically the first thing on Thursday, just the second game of the uh, double elimination bracket. Seating, 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 seating. seating. Anyway, uh, look at Corey yeah, White's not lined up. Corey, Corey White is not lined up. He's the facing Bayou the Bayou City. Bayou. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's Wiley with a swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Uh, brings the count. No ball, one strike. Wiley's two for three. Three, I'm sorry. Yeah, two for three. three day. Fonzie getting himself ready. 
Look how confident he looks at the plate right there, man. This game's all about confidence. Like you see, he's got a lot of confidence right now. It's a pitch grounded up the middle. And Wiley's on the way. Tyler overruns the ball. He's got it up. Runner is ruled safe. It looked like he missed the base. The umpire has ruled that Wiley touched the base on the way by. I'm talking. It's a little hard for us to see the all by you see he's off, off, okay, off the so bench. Okay, so we're gonna have a we're gonna have a we're gonna have a little conversation here between the first base judge and the head plate home plate umpire just to make certain that uh, Corey J. Corey Wiley touched the base on the way by. We're gonna have a little chat here. Um, so the home plate umpire, uh, Kent Price, a veteran, quality veteran umpire, uh, calling the action behind the plate today. Uh, <clears throat> making his rounds to uh, discuss with the, the rest of the, the officiating crew to make sure that they've got the right call here. But the call as stands is a run, which bring the score to 11 to five Bayou City. My goodness. Uh, here at the, uh, I don't know. Bottom of the uh, bottom of three. Bottom three. Hats off to the Bayou City Heat for for getting this going like this. Indianapolis Absolutely. has got a gut check. I, they haven't had they haven't had a tight game all week. They haven't had a tight game all week. So uh, you know, there's a there's a big mental component to this game of just getting your confidence back. All these guys, they might be shell shocked a little bit. They've been overrunning some balls, you know. Um, anyone can fix it. They'll get it fixed. And the call stands, and the score is 11-5, and that brings up Daryl Miner to the plate again. That hurt. That hurt. I saw a handful of the Indianapolis players are on the field when that ball cut out. Their hands went up in the air like, like they were disgusted by the call. Now, Daryl Miner, a perennial offensive all tournament standout for Bayou City. This guy, uh, this guy's still got a lot of power. Maybe not the speed that he used to have back in the now. This is a guy that started playing like as a teenager back in 1986. Texas beat ball made his first appearance in the World Series in Austin in 1988. That's Hit when his, I graduated <laughs> high school, by the way. <laughs> was hitting the ball 180 feet in the air uh, by the time you know, 1990 rolls around and. Uh, leads the league unofficially in home runs and not a stat that we keep, but it was a line drive down the left field line. Long run for Bueller to make the play. He's over, un, overruns the ball, and Miner scores to make the score 12 to 5. You know, and with this, I, I don't know what you have, if you have a name for this defense, but I kind of call this a triangle defense. We call it the up. double T, the double triangle. Double triangle. Yeah. All right, so with this triangle defense, you're giving up the lines. I mean, you, you know, headache. And you know, when you get those, <laughs> when you get those balls that go down the line, especially that it's going to be between, I don't know, 105 and 120. Those, those are those are difficult, really difficult plays against this type of defense, and that's exactly where he placed it. Well, as we are, we were talking about earlier, you're you're going to have to pick what you're going to cover. There is no defense that can. I mean, okay, so you can. Indianapolis had a defense, and this is a Thunder with Dave Benny, and they had a point position playing at 100 feet. And even with that, I mean, it covers, you know, it does a good job of dividing the real estate into chunks, you know. Everybody's got their equal chunk, but that is not an easy defense to play, as the San Antonio Jets found out in 2016. Yeah, most of the top teams have gotten away from that defense. It puts a, it puts a lot of pressure on people to, uh, you know, to cover a big territory big amount of territory and that puts a lot of strain so what the thunder and a lot of the other top teams use is a strategy that tries to um, defend places that you know are common for to hit there's a line drive by bam bam in the left center right center field and it gets by Corey white Corey white can't make the play on that rob what do we, did Tello get a hand on that I, it looked like when it went over Tello, it looked like it lost some speed i think Tello might have slowed that down for what are we what are we looking at here rob? we're looking at we're looking at something pretty amazing. I'm uh, I'm impressed with Bayou City Heat. You know, Fonzie Madrano, you can't say enough about his his pitching right now. <laughs> He's got these guys banging, they're on fire, everything's a quality hit. No grounders, Rob. I mean, these are all these that's, are all shots. That's thirteen. I got thirteen. My score sheet's a mess, but I think I got thirteen. Uh, 
13, 13 runs, so that puts him with, uh, let's see, is this a nine run inning that we're looking at? Uh, 10, uh, yeah, 10 so far, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. This is a 10 run inning by Bayou City Heat. They've got so one, that's a, two, three, four guys who scored twice in this inning. So Fleeks is now really closed. There's an easy ground ball into third base line. Rodriguez got yeah. it. Uh, that retires the side finally, but a lot of blood comes in. <laughs> it is drawn there by the Bayou City Heat, and uh, they are definitely there in this game. Can we say they're in control of this game? I'd, I'd say Indianapolis is... They gotta get it together. They gotta, they have, they gotta get it together. Let's see. They've got a hill to climb. They've got a hill to climb, and we're gonna we're gonna find out if uh, this is this is the first uh, real test uh, for the Thunder, as you were as you were saying. This is uh, this is a surprise. Uh, They've beaten up everyone all year long, especially they, when their uh, starters play all the time. So this is gonna be a gut check for them. They gotta do some mental work. That's why they play the game, Rob. I mean, after looking at the uh, the score, or just hearing the score of the Indy Edge game, who has given the Thunder some issues, uh, played close games against the Indy Thunder, the Indy Edge playing the Thunder. Um, <clears throat> been quite surprising when you hear the score of 18-1, to 1, Thunder over the Edge. That is, uh, that is, that is quite the beatdown, and that is, I'm, that is a very, very good uh, Indy Edge team. Yeah, they and, laid the beatdown on my squad earlier in the week. Uh, they were just raking that day. Sometimes you're on, sometimes you're off. Yeah. And right now, Bayou City is on. Jared Woodard is uh, one of the best in the game. He's won a couple pitcher catcher awards, him and Avery. In fact, I think, uh, I think he's up last to four, year. three or four by now. So, uh, Well, they got their work cut out. Got their work cut they out. They need to get their defense off the field. And... All right, so uh, let's see. Zach Bueller at the plate now for the Thunder is going to get it started. <clears throat> now, um, Bayou City also plays a form of the double triangle that we were talking about. Yep. Uh, in this uh, case, Lee Rodriguez has moved from the right center field position to the center right center field position to uh, position him more up the middle, and he's playing Bueller about a 165, 160 feet, 55, 160, somewhere in that area. First pitch to Bueller, fouled back. Uh, Bueller on target to hit one deep and high up the middle as he does. <laughs> uh, that's scouting right there. You know, some teams just put their guys on the field and they stay in the same spot the whole game. Some teams will shift depending on what they see. So Bayou City definitely knows that, that Bueller doesn't go down the right side. Ball, left center field. Miner's got it lined up. Let's see if he can get it up before. Nope, he gets up, but Bueller beat it. Too much speed by Zach Bueller. Well done. Nice air ball by Bueller. Good pitch. Good pitch. It's a good way to get started. That's Bueller's first run on the day. He's one for three now. Corey scored twice. Corey White. They take Corey up. Looks like Corey's been taped. Oh, yeah, he's taped. Mind games they're playing. So here comes Jared. Jared looks dialed in. Scanning over the defense. The wind is picked up and that uh, can sometimes throw off a base runner. There's a line drive down the left field line. That's foul. <laughs> foul by Angie. Nice shot. The, so the uh, ball has to stay fair at 100 feet. It has to stay fair. It can go foul after 100 feet. Where we're sitting, that probably went foul, like 98 feet, 99 feet. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's laughing because I got rooked on a play. It had no, no impact on our game, but... Uh, Hey, you know what? All our umpires are volunteers, yeah, and uh, you gotta give a you gotta appreciate any volunteer that's willing to take a week away from their family to come help us out. Yeah, absolutely. So that brings the score. Where are we where are we we're at thirteen six. At? Thirteen six. Thirteen six now. Corey White scored twice. Oh one count. Bravo. Man, he has really added some power and some consistency to his uh, to his uh, repertoire. He's always been really fast, but now he's he's a consistent hitter that can really pop it. 
high fly oh. ball into short left field, and it is going foul. <laughs> <laughs> Jared is, uh, he's locked in, man. You can see it, you can see it in his eyes. He is, uh, he is, he's in not messing around mode right now. So I was talking to Corey and, and his brother before the game, and um, they both lost their sight to cataracts as little kids. They never had that, they didn't have this, you know, some people have the surgery to clear it up, they didn't have the surgery. At, not when they were young, at least at first. There's a swing and a miss wow. and a strikeout. That'll wow. be the first out of the inning. Got some bat speed on him. Got some bat speed. And to get bat speed, it takes more than strength. It takes, uh, you know, it takes total body coordination to swing the bat that fast. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> he's got it. Man. Yeah, you got to time really everything up. Your hands, your hips, everything's got to get through at the same time to get that type of speed. All right, so here we are with one out here in the top of the fourth inning. He's taped also, Kevin. Take Corian as well. Corian's 0 for 2. He's had two. One that cost him. One would give him the pink blindfold on my team. It's a ground ball right up the middle into Daryl Minor territory. The spot of. Ooh, oh, there's a collision between Blake Boudreaux and Joseph Fleeks. As Blake went a little bit outside his territory, Fleeks and came up limping. Got into Joseph Fleeks. Uh, a little collision out in the field, but uh, both players appear to be okay. Just a little bruise. Uh, I don't know if Fleeks is okay. He is now down on his stomach in dead center field, down around the 170 line. I can't even see him now. There's a hill out there. Yeah. Fleeks, uh, he is now pounding his, pounding his fist on the ground. He's in some pain. John Parker. Isn't John Parker a massage therapist? I think he is. <laughs> He's talking to Blake, who's now on all fours. I don't even know the rule. If you're taped and this happens, are you allowed to take your blindfold off? With the umpire approval. Yeah. With I, umpire approval. There we go, with umpire approval. Here's this Here's little thing. It's Tyler Rodriguez is gonna, he's standing at the plate. And uh, one thing Tyler does is kind of his ammo. It's right before he gets ready to hit, he holds the bat like a gun and he fires shots to all fields. On the base check? Yeah, on the base check. Yeah. And his last shot he fires is when he's trying to play Babe Ruth and predict where he's going to hit it. Okay. So let's see if he's accurate. And I asked him why he does it. Oh, we have paramedics coming out. There's two, there's two people in there. Yeah, Fleeks is down. He appears to be hurt. Yeah. They uh, got to maintain the discipline of your defense. Let, let's talk about that for a second, all right? So, <clears throat> um, Kevin, we we're both we both coach teams, and the majority of our players are are in our city. Some of the teams they come out and they're pulling people from other cities, and and I don't know where Fleeks. I know Blake's right from Houston. I I think Fleeks is from Houston. Fleeks right? is Houston as well, yes sir. So when you bring in other people in, like Wygan, for example, he's from Columbus. He might only get a chance to practice with them a few times a year. So sometimes, uh, it, how do how do the teams that that get together only a few times a year and practice together as a unit? How do they get that, that, that defense locked down compared to a team that practices 20 times a year together? How, how do they make it happen? Well, the first thing is, is as coaches, you know, as you know, that you really need to be, uh, you need to main, you need to have strict disciplines as far as where you go on defense. Very strict, and you've got to maintain those disciplines at all times. And communication is the key, as you know, at the beginning of the play. The defensive uh, players will sound off by position number. One, two, three, four, five. So as you stagger players in throughout the defense, you have to make sure that the defenders are conscious of the way, number one, they're facing. They have to be facing and oriented properly. The second step is to ask the player, what is your angle towards the middle of the field? Make them point to the angle to, that they are going to go if the ball is hit to the middle. Make them point to the angle that they're going to go towards the baseline if it's hit that way. Make sure that they understand the discipline and the depths that they are allowed to play. you got to make darn sure that infielders and midfielders are prohibited from turning their back to home plate and running after a ball. Yep. Prohibited. you gotta, you got to stress that Same very early, and you've got to... 
they're carting one of the players off. That looks, looks like, like uh, looks getting like carted off. Is getting carted off here. Golf carts on a field is never a good thing during a championship game or any game for that matter. All right, well, who do they got coming in? Didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I just saw no, the no, golf no. cart. This Fleeks is, is very important. upset. Um, you know, if, uh, that's a big loss for them. Fleeks is uh, two for four. With a put out. Uh, Fleeks yes, has got at least one. Yes, at least one. Yeah. Leave your score sheet alone. My memory is garbage. Game, huh? My memory is bad, man. <laughs> My uh, partner here, Rob Weissman, can be uh, uh, quite the stats junkie. I'm a paperwork guy. If you don't, if you're a renegade coach, you have to have a clipboard, and I don't have yeah. enough today. <laughs> Rob and I, Rob and I's coaching styles are opposed to each other. In the we do more gut. He does all stat. Okay, I've got a feeling. I've got a hunch, Isaiah, that you need to take a step forward. <laughs> Rob will say, statistics got, prove, Isaiah, I've that you need to take a step forward. <laughs> i got a scattergram that shows 80% of the balls he hits is going there. All right, who are they bringing in? It looked like they're going to go empty man formation so far. I haven't seen the replacement, and we're going to go Tim Cyphers. Tim Cyphers is uh, going to replace... Uh, Joseph Fleeks. We're going to check in here. Uh, we'll send our sideline reporter to go. We'll send our sideline reporter to go uh, get an update on the health of Joe Fleeks and see what his status is for the rest of the day. He is moving, but he is hobbled. I don't know if it's an ankle, leg, thigh. It may be a deep thigh bruise. I, I'd hate to speculate at this point, but if I had to guess, I would say thigh bruise. I would, I, I would say the Boudreaux knee went into the thigh of, of, of Joseph Fleeks going over the middle. If I had to guess, I shouldn't speculate, but that's what I would. Well, <laughs> since if, it's, I am, if it's a bruise like that, you can come back from that. You know, there's a rule in the that we have in place. It's a re-entry rule. So once you're, it's not like baseball where you come out of the game and you're out and you can't come back in. So, you know, they got a big lead. Um, they can take him out, take care of that leg, and if they need him to come back, they can bring him back. Indy Thunder, number 39, Tyler Rodriguez. So where are they hiding Cyphers? Cyphers is playing right in position. He's going to be playing at 115 to 120 feet in uh, center, right center. And, uh, you know, if it, we'll just go ahead and save this for the, uh, the veterans listening listening that use the standard five in the middle and one on the line he's playing we'll just go ahead and call him in the right field <laughs> i get turned around because we do an opposite in texas right so we're going to call him in a in a right field uh, uh four three how am i doing rob did i get that right uh, you know i don't even do it i'm an offensive coach i let the defensive work to the other guys <laughs> the defensive work to my right. my spotters Brian so Grillo and Jason Lachick. He's got the shotgun. This All right, time. where's his last one going? First base, third base. Yeah, he's got and the. Uh, oh man, he's third base is out. <laughs> I asked him why he does it. He's like, it just keeps me loose. I like to have fun. I'm always talking. Oh, he's playing to right center. Let's see if that's where he's gonna go. Who's playing deep for right center? Rodriguez looks like he's facing the wrong direction. Close. Here's the first pitch from Woodard. So, <clears throat> it's a missed pitch by Woodard. Count goes 0 1. Second pitch is grounded, foul at the plate. <clears throat> Cyphers is pointed a little bit too far clockwise. He's facing the Thunder bench. Let's see if the new spotter, Chelsea Hodges, is that Chelsea Hodges, right? yeah. She's standing right off the shoulder of Ja'Cory Wiley, so the two defenders that are facing in wrong directions are off behind her, and she hasn't turned her head to look. Okay, That could cause injuries. Here's the one ball, two strike. Rodriguez, line drive to Blake Boudreaux. Oh, my God. He gets over Blake. He's trying to find it. He's got it. It's up, and he's out. So there's the second out of the inning. we got one in and two outs in the top half of the fourth inning for the Indy Thunder with the score, 13-6. Seven. seven, I think it's seven. seven. That's where my stat sheet comes in. Okay, good job <laughs> with the stat sheet. My gut feeling says six. six. Yeah. Your stat sheet said seven. Of course, neither of them are official. <laughs> 
Steve Garrett was holding up seven figures. All right, so there we go. Statue wins on that one. Well, we learned two things, the, the accurate score and the fact that Steven Garrett can count to seven. <laughs> Good times. Steven Garrett, the secretary of the NBBA, does a fantastic job re-elected during the General Assembly. Pours the heart and soul into it. First pitch to Eric Rodriguez, the leadoff hitter, swung and missed. Man, he was going to try to. He swung at 110 percent around that one. Rob, he was going to hit that one to the moon. Oh, one with two outs. Swing and a miss. You talk about some. Looks back. like she's uh she's improved the alignment of the right side a little bit. Yep, they fixed it over there on the right side of that defense for Vice City. They're also still playing way off that line with that deep end. Rodriguez is still playing center field. Good pass ball is it? Possible that she's listening to the stream? I don't know. Live, Rob? Or? Hey, did you see that take on Ty, on, on Eric? The, yeah, I did. With the slap on the, on the pants. I mean, that's something I've seen Taiwan do for years and thought it's been neat. I've never seen any other team do it, but Indy seems to be adapting that this year. Just trying to, instead of just standing there and taking a pitch, I think the thought process is try to time when you're going to start swinging with your hands just to get your timing down. I can see the value. And swing and a miss. He struck out Eric Rodriguez. Wow. Uh, Rodriguez is oh, oh, three. It's interesting. I mean, Rodriguez is hitting bombs all day, and now all of a sudden he's where if he's really doing that, taking that take for the timing. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I thought that was three outs. But so did. I guess I'm the only one. And after three and a half, 13 to seven. Are you sitting? Well, Vice City's still standing Vice on the field. Vice City's still standing on the field. They're having Janet trouble. Leonard has got her. She's like, "What's going on out there?" <laughs> Janet Leonard's got her hands out. They're what they're that got? dialed in, brother. <laughs> Bayou has that dialed in. They just want to keep playing defense. Yeah, it was uh, uh, yeah, three outs. Corey White struck out. Tyler grounded out to Blake, and Erod struck out. That's three. Okay, so here we are. Now this is very, very. This is this is a key moment in the game right now. A key moment. For the Thunder, they really need to make a defensive stand here. They are in jeopardy of letting this game slip away from them, and uh, this is this is going to be uh, this is going to be a hill to climb if they give up another five. You know, I mean, now look, it, if anybody's equipped to do it, let's just be honest. I mean, the Indy Thunder—they've got the best offensive, you know, team in the league. They've got mm -hmm. the best pitcher. They got, you know, the best. I mean, it's hard to find somebody in their starting six that didn't hit in 650 or better. Uh, so they're very Can't well run down the line in oh, five seconds or under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, if anybody's equipped to do it, it would certainly be the Indy Thunder. But at some point, they're going to have to they're going to have to make a defensive stand and start making a play. It starts by getting the ground balls that they're supposed to, and they know this. And then it starts by uh, hitting more than one quality shot in a row. You know, you need to have uh, you need to put together a streak of quality shots and. I tell you what, when you're uh, when you're in quicksand, it, it's tough to uh, it's tough to get traction. Well, you know, you you, you talk about the physical things they need to do. This could be a mental thing. I mean, you get down like this, you haven't been down for a while. You got It's a real gut check. You got to see what you're made of. Sometimes you start doubting things. You might start wondering what the hell's going on. Well, I've seen a lot of frustration from them. You know, Erod trying to get his timing down after being three for three. They were upset about a miss base. Um, they've you know they've been running the wrong way a couple of times out there. It could be in their head a little bit. They just got to take a deep breath. Yeah, but look at their down. body language, man. That does not, the body language of the Thunder does not look like a team that's in panic. And especially their leader, Jared Woodard. He oh, does no, not look no. like anybody that's shook up right now. Corian's a little uh, out of alignment. Yeah. Lee Rodriguez, swing and miss. All right, Lee's uh, one for three. Felt that he had his balance better, and he got they had a bomb down the first base line his last half at. Yeah, the last shot was contested by uh, Miguel Tello in right field, but it was right down the line, and Lee Rodriguez beat it out. There's that ground ball into the left, right center field, and Corian oh, no. can't make the play. Tyler can't make the play, and Lee Rodriguez can't. That's a C Lee Rodriguez single. scores, and I'm I'm just beside myself right now. There's an easy grounder to the right side. Four and, guys. Uh, Four guys tried to have a shot at that ball, uh, and it's, Corian could make the play. It was just by him. It was it was too fast for them. But Miguel Tello had a legitimate shot, and Corey White, who's been much improved on defense this year, was unable to make that play. And uh, Houston's getting away with it right now. They are. They are. You know. Um, Adam Rodenbeck is on that Indy Thunder defense, one of the top defensive outfielders in the league. Uh, found out that uh, he's unavailable. He hurt his knee earlier this year, so he hasn't played. 
Kyle Lewis. Kyle Lewis. I saw Kyle Lewis pregame. Mariah Brown's walking on his back. I mean, literally just standing on his back when he's on the ground. He'll he's be, a solid defender. He'll be ready if they need him. Rob Wigan with a line drive in the left field. It's in Bueller territory. Bueller is on it. He Ooh. can't make the play. It's off his arm. And Wigan gets the base on a ball that you would expect Bueller to be getting. So here's what happened there, right? From a defensive, from a coaching perspective, when you go to the ground, you got to go to the ground with your arms out. He had his arms in on his body, and then he pushed the ball away from him. Yeah, amen. I mean, if you've got to, you've got to clean it up by getting your arms out. You don't want to make a ramp for the ball to go over with your arm. You've got to get it away from your body, get it up at shoulder height. You can use the top arm to block a ball or keep it hit from hitting your face. But you've got to get your elbow up above your shoulder. If it's below your shoulder, you're going to create a ramp for the ball. And yeah, good, good eye. Rob, that's exactly what Push happened on that play with Bueller. Got to get those arms out. We call them T-Rex arms. Get the little <laughs> arms inside and get locked in your body. Got to get them out. Push well, it away. Well said. Damn, wow. So that brings up the leadoff hitter, Ja'Cory Wiley. Three for four. Three for four on the day. The Bayou City Heat speedster, the leadoff guy. Trying to add to an already impressive lead by the Heat. 15-7. Ground ball straight up the middle. Tyler is over, overruns the play, and there's Corey, but it doesn't get to him in time, and easy grounder scores right up the middle. This is uh, something we're not used to seeing from the Thunder defense. I mean, I don't know, Kevin. I mean, you look at them and you think they look calm. What are, what are we looking at, Rob? I, I'm telling you, they're, they're distraught out there. As a coach, I've seen this happen on my team plenty of time. With body language, they look okay, but you know, if you know your players inside, they're all going WTF, and that's I think what's going on out here. So, uh, Bayou City, I'm going to give them a little bit of credit right now in the fact that if you look at their demeanor, they look like a team that expected this. They're not going crazy. You know, they're not jumping around like they've, like they've been there. You know that they're. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is a team. If you look at their demeanor right now. They look like they expected to be in this spot. Daryl oh. Miner up with a foul ball off the right field side. 0-1. Fonzie gives them a ton of confidence. And uh, my God, is he pitching great. And I'm seeing, looking at Fleeks, looks like they're gonna, they got an ankle. Looks like an ankle injury with Fleeks. They're taping him up. Um, they might try to get him back in the game. We talked about that re-entry rule. Now they don't need him back. They gotta win two, Kevin. They got a big lead. Swing and a miss by Miner. Brings the count 0-2. Bottom of four, Bayou City with one out trying to add. Do they have an out? They have no outs. No outs trying to add to a 15-7 lead. 16-7. Miner. Miner swing and a miss. Kind of a stride in. Kind of confused, you can tell by the look on Fonzie's face. That swing confused him. That's 0-3. Miner has made an adjustment, <clears throat> looks like, either this year or last. He, uh, uh, he used to start with the bat away from his body, you know, that really high, you know, with his hands above his shoulders. There's a ground ball right to Eric Rodriguez, and Rodriguez, well, he has to go to the line, but he's still in position, yeah, he's makes him. the play. Yeah. All right. Miner used to Miner's reach behind his body and hold Rodriguez his hands shoulder higher, higher, and make this big swing. It appears they've changed that to have him start with the bat on his shoulder and load up to the shoulders and then come through. Well, that's that rubber band Probably effect when you load, right? When you get that rubber band effect and you load, you get your hands moving as opposed to coming from a stationary position, and that can help improve your bat speed. It, get get it your hands can. back before they go forward. Exactly. It also adds another moving component to your swing that can add yeah. to things. I mean, more things set, move, I mean, more things can break. Exactly. Yeah. However, a lot of a lot of players use the load up uh, action as a trigger, like you said, to improve your timing, make it more consistent. Some people like to start in the loaded up position. You know, yeah. it, it, we don't do, get we, the same momentum, but uh, the same principle applies. You know, it helps with, to improve arm extension. It, it, oh, and it cuts down on inconsistencies. Oh, we've got a. Corey White's way out of alignment out there. Very misaligned Corey White as he's facing, uh, maybe by design, brother. I mean, uh, he looks like he's facing first base. Almost yeah, comes in my way now. I can't see. There he goes. Oh, nope. no, no. There we go. They there fixed go. him. They got him. She, I think Mariah's listening to the stream as well, brother. <laughs> oh, one to Seth Clark. 
four for four? Four for five. Nope, sorry. Four for five. Nope, three for four. Three for four. There's one off the fist over to Corey on white. Spinner. It spins towards the line, but he's still on it. Oh, wow. Makes the play. Taped and all. <laughs> nice play by Corey on white. I mean, a routine play, but nicely done. No wasted movement. Straight to the spinner. On the spinners to the line, Rob. Like you were saying, um, uh, they have a habit to spin towards the foul line. It's important as an infielder on little looping fly balls to stay on your feet until the last minute. Corian White did a fantastic job of doing that right there. That was a great play. You know, it, you, you, you got to stay on your feet and you got to listen. And you got to, you know, one of the things that we teach is hey, if they got these golf swings, you just know there's a high percentage chance that it's going to spin and you got to be ready for it. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it always goes to line. First base, please. Or I should say 99% of the you time. You know, last year when we were in West Palm Beach, we played on fields that were like no other things we ever played on, and a lot of those balls weren't spinning because they were plugging like a putting green. They were yeah. hitting the ground and just plugging. These fields are a little harder than that, and that's why you see that spin. Exactly. So Tim Cypher's at the plate who re replaced Fleeks uh, in the lineup. Right-handed hitter. A little bit early. They were way off between the pitcher and the batter on that one. Uh, looks like Cypher is a little bit keyed up there, trying to get a quick jump on that one. Oh, one. Let's see what kind of adjustments they make. The nice adjustment there, and Fonz is right on top of the bat. I'd say that's a tentative swing from Cypher's. Yeah, look like he's kind of steering it right there, yeah. just a bit. He needs to let his hands go. Next swing. A better swing, but early. Fonzie's a little upset. I don't know what he's upset about, but man, he just slammed his hand in his glove. He walked off the mound. I'm going to guess the swing was early. The swing was early. Something's off. That? Some inconsistencies. <laughs> the bat was already gone by the time the ball got there. It's yeah. okay. Cypher's coming in. It's a no difficult situation for Cypher's. Coming into a championship game. Maybe no. didn't play enough, you know, later in the week. Cypher's with a swing and a miss. That's the third out of the inning, and that... That brings the score to uh, Bayou City 15, 16, and Indy Thunder 7. 16, 7 after 4. So, two more chances. Is that what you have, Rob? You have 16? Yep. Yeah. I got 18. I got to go look. Are you sure it's 16? Is it 16 or 18? 16. I thought it was 17. Uh, we're trying to get uh, the score oh, updated score just to yes. make sure it's as accurate as we can possibly get it. Just a little reminder, we, have our, we are holding a 50-50 raffle. So, uh, so $1 let's talk about this, Rob, while you reconcile your score. I don't think I can reconcile this disaster. <laughs> All right, Mom. Should I go try and reconcile it, or we should we stay and talk? Let me take an attempt. I'll be right back during this half inning. Break. There you go. Also being sold there, the 2019. So as uh, as Rob as Rob Weissman, my broadcasting partner for the stream, uh, updates the score. We will uh, try to uh, tell you a little bit more about the game of beat baseball. Uh, of course, the pitcher and the batter are all on the same team. They work together to get a hit. If the ball is hit by the offensive player, one of the six blind fielders tries to pick up the ball. If they pick up the ball before the runner gets to the base, of course he's out. If the runner gets to the base before the defense can find and get the ball now off batting, the ground, then uh, uh, the, the run is scored. So uh, this being the championship game for the 2018 World Series, uh, this is the, uh, the undefeated team, the Indy Thunder. Has to beat Bayou City one time. Bayou City has to defeat the Indy Thunder two times to take home the trophy. All right, it is 16 to 7. I, I have so much fun. I'm having so much fun. I'm giving people runs when they should be getting put outs. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gerald Dykus will lead off the top half of the fifth inning for the Indy Thunder. First pitch is swung on and missed. Gerald Dykus is a nurse. Fun profession there, taking care of people. Considers himself the leader of this team. As far as the starting lineup, you know, being the elder statesman, 22 years old. Swing high. Swung on a miss. Well, uh, you know, here's the thing. What, what in, a, in a traditional swing, you would not want the, the tip of the bat to be above your hands at contact. But let me tell you what, this dude is so strong, he can hammer the ball 
with his uh, now that's a long foul ball by Dykus off the left field side. The one of the problems is with having the tip of the bat above the hands is that it will definitely have an extreme spin off to the left field side if you know the batter is a little bit early. Anyway, um, teach his own. His uh, he's strong. He's got his wrists in good position. His you know his body is certainly coordinated. Has to be for a guy. I mean. He's very strong. He takes care of himself. You can tell by that. But, yeah. He's in really good shape. But you have to have a coordinated body to be a hundred. You know, what appears to be a hundred and sixty-five pound man slamming a ball one hundred and seventy feet in the air. Swinging a thirty-six ounce bat, right? Absolutely. Something like that. So here he goes. Just swinging a miss. He was retired on strikes. So there's two outs in the inning. strikes out. Not. Dyke is having a rough game. He's one for four. And that's it. I mean, I mean, Erod's got three runs, and uh, Corey's got two runs. Zach's got one. Corian's got one. They need to get more production from the in this lineup other than Eric. As a as a coach of the San Antonio Jets, I'm, I'm used to seeing Dykes tear us up. Uh, same as he a coach a, of Boston. He's a Jet killer, man. I mean, we have a hard time getting that guy out. And, I'm, uh, this is something I'm not usually seeing. Anyway, Zach Bueller takes the first pitch line straight to Boudreaux. He's got it knocked down. It lands in his lap, and he's up with it. That re- so there's the second out of the inning. I, I'm sorry, I thought that was the third out. So that's the second out of the inning. We got one in. Do we have one in? Now batting number three, Corey White. Not this got, inning. No, we've got two that's seven two put outs for Blake. Seven put outs for Blake Boudreaux. You know, when you got a big guy like Blake playing up front like that, I mean, that hit the top of his hip. A lot of, like, I, sometimes I got little guys playing up front, and they just bounce right over our little guys. I mean, Blake, I'm not saying, I mean, Blake's a big man. Was he 6'4"? Give or take. First pitch, line drive down the line. The only person that's got a chance at this is Rob Wigand. He knocks it down. Oh, but he can't get it up cleanly. Crap, that is a hell of an effort by that Wigand. Is a, that is a nice play by Wigand, that's but an incredibly fast pace by Corey White. Oh, my God, he needed That was Corey on, right? Was no, that was Corey, that was Corey, and he needed it. That, that had to be a sub-five base right there, Rob. That had to be a sub-five base because that was a line drive. Straight to Wigan, and he had to go to his right 20 feet, and he made a great play, and he made it wasn't the cleanest play, but... And the Bayou City Heat is asking for an appeal, and there was really no official appeals process. It's up to the discretion of the home plate umpire on whether they, you know, go try to get help from other umpires. Um, Sometimes I think on a play like that, I think like the first base on board has probably the best view of that play. Look, man, don't get me started on this. At some point, the NBBA, you know, look, here's the other thing. We do need qualified umpires. If you think about, if you think about how many games we have on, we have a, a very, very qualified crew on the field right now. With one, two, three, four, five, six experienced experienced umpires covering this game fantastic umpires but if you were to have it's almost impossible to have six qualified umpires on eight fields required to put on a 20 you know a 20 team tournament so i mean you're you're talking about now you're talking about you know nearly 50 volunteers that, well, I mean, actually, let, umpires let me tell you that are, something here. I don't know if you know this. And when we go to Philadelphia, <clears throat> in Haddonfield, New Jersey, one thing they do differently than anyone else, they give them the run. That's a run, the run stance. One of the things they do in Philadelphia is they go to the, I don't know what it is, but the local ASA teams, and they actually bring in um, regional softball and baseball umpires, and they umpire a whole tournament. They bring in a crew that take, take care of three fields. We had three qualified ASA umpires on every field for the entire day. You know, sounds like the way to go. Yeah, Someone, sounds like you know, the way to go. I, I know my team would pay more money to come if we could have more qualified on parts. There's a Corian White at the plate. There's a ground ball right to Boudreaux. Hit it right on the speaker, but it's right to him. Oh. Easy play for Blake, and that retires the side. Wow. Oh. And uh, put out number eight. Wow. Are we going to bottom of five? 
We're going to bottom five. We're going to bottom of five. 16 to 8. I mean, they are doubling the they are doubling the thunder right now, Rob. So, Kevin, this happened to you yesterday. It was the opposite. You guys are down 16-8 at this point in the game. You guys almost brought your team back. You got it back to 16-13. How much of a mountain? What do you talk to your team about when you're down 16 -8? As a pitcher, what are you doing, if anything, differently when you're down 16-8 in a game like this? Nothing. <laughs> Oh, I did see one thing you I'm did. I'm sorry. <laughs> you did one thing different. You turned your cap around. You went rally cap. You went rally cap, man. I don't think that had anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a rally cap, Rob. That Look, I mean, there are two components to hitting. There's a there's a batter swinging that thing, and he's got the hard part. You know, the pitcher's got the easy part because he can see what's going on. You know, the batter's got the hard part. He's got to maintain some consistency and power in what they're doing. So, look, I mean, there's adjustments. And then, just to be honest with you, it only takes a couple of bombs to get you back in that groove, you know what I mean? It's important to have, you know, a lineup full of consistent hitters. I mean, I don't want to make this anything about the Jets, you know, but when you have consistent hitters from one through six, it's just a matter of time before you start banging, you know, similar to the Thunder. It's just a matter of time. I mean, they are consistent hitters with a consistent pitcher. And once you get on that roll, everything feeds off itself. Every The batters are more comfortable. They lack, Look, lack of success will erode your confidence. But it only takes a couple to get it back, Rob. You start yeah. rolling, the next batter goes, shoot, I can do that. I can Hitting's contagious. Like Hitting is so contagious. Very contagious, and it's a, it's a momentum sport, you know. It's like a, a lot of this is like basketball, college basketball. <laughs> the crowds are going nuts, you know. You start banging a few of them. It starts feeding off itself. Before you know it, you're back in the ball game. But the first thing they need to do is collect the ground balls, Rob. They're not doing the it. The fact that, you know, look, I, you got to give a ton of credit to Bayou City. That's not the intent of this. But these are balls that you normally see that Thunder grab. And they're talking about grounders. So they're going to start with Lee Rodriguez here. And there's a swing and a foul tip at the plate. <clears throat> Rodriguez is... Uh, Two for four. Yeah. Scores last two trips up. Yeah, one on a grounder up the middle, one on a line drive right down the first baseline. And uh, the gray bearded Lee Rodriguez steps in. He's ready to go. Swing and a miss. Now that one, big swing. Fonzie just missed on that one, but he. You can tell, you know, you can tell by the body language that uh, he was expecting that ball to be hit when he let it go. Mm -hmm. so here we go. The 0 2 to Rodriguez. There's a ground ball right down the first base line and goes foul. Yeah, I didn't want that because Corian White was uh, all over it. He was all over that one. That was that was going to be collected easily. So 3 Lee Rodriguez got the long walk back to home plate. Now look, all right, so this is what I want to talk about, Rob. The uh, Tell me how the spotting can help Let's say Miguel Tello here playing at 130 foot feet. How is it possible that he can cover the 170 foot line on a line drive? How is there something that the spotter can do to help? Yeah, I mean they can change the they can you know as far as the call when they when they you know the, the only thing the spotter can do well there's two things when the ball's hit they can change the tone of their voice to help warn that that fielder where that ball's going. All right, more on that in a sec. There's Rodriguez with a long fly ball on the right field, almost to the line. Tello turns his back to home plate and gives chase. They get the ball, but not in time. Rodriguez puts another one on a board. I mean, for Tello to be able to make that play that close, as far as that ball got hit, is just impressive. Yeah, so as you were saying, there's, uh, you know, you can position your players at a, you know, at a reasonable depth so they can cover, you know, intermediate balls, but they can also contest the deep balls with voice inflection uh, by the spotter. You know, one of the things I've just been watching a little bit with Indy, it's, you know, they didn't really adjust to, they don't really, they're not really adjust on the right side much. You know, they could have, you know, potentially played a little deeper. And that's one of the things I don't like about the triangle defense. I don't think I've ever seen Rodriguez hit a ball to the left side of the field. <laughs> so, you know, with the triangle defense, you can't overload. Here we go. Play ball. <laughs> oh, they will. They'll move Bueller. They'll move Bueller and they'll move, they'll move Tello. Now, we haven't seen it yet, but they will. I've seen them move uh, 
Yeah, I've seen him move Bueller playing left center field uh, to dead pool hitters uh, like Nick Fernandez. But will they, will they switch we'll four on. and put four on? They'll keep a triangle. They won't put four on the no, right side, right? They won't yeah. overload. Yeah. All right, I haven't seen it. Yeah. All right, Rob Wigan. He's a foul ball off left field side. So Wigan with some success at the plate today. Going uh, three for four, it looks like. Three for four with uh, Tyler put him up in the middle of the field. Yeah. Wygant's having a heck of a series. I saw him play really well against you. Impressive. He's yeah. been in this league a long time. Been in this league a long time, getting a start of about 1993. Missed a handful of tournaments in the uh, uh, 2000s. Uh, got back in the game uh, as, you know, their teams in, 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 in Columbus are, have not participated. They had a, Really nice run in, uh, with the Vipers. Uh, they were a formidable opponent. They were among you know, the top eight teams in the league. Does he have a ring? Go! Yes, with, no, sorry, I'm so sorry. He had a, he's made a couple of finals. He appeared in the finals with the 2003 Oklahoma City Bombers. Okay. And uh, certainly deserving of one. <laughs> a great Go! player for a long time. Was he on a Kansas Was he on a Kansas uh, Swung on and miss. Yeah, no, swung on and miss. So there's a strikeout by Wigan. Is that the second strikeout by Fonzi? He had a, I think that's the second. He had a Cyphers and he had a uh, Wigan. Those are his only two strikeouts of the contest. Wow. And it looks like, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Looks like Corey Wiley's going to come to the plate. And he is, he's also three, oh, he's four for five. Four for five. Four for five. Having some success at the plate. Uh, Corian put him out once. Yeah. Having some success at the plate. A couple practice swings. Trying to get loosened up. Wind picking up, which can affect uh, base running. Affects the whole game. Go! The pitch. Almost. Really close. They're all over it. Wind can play havoc. Uh, especially to inexperienced players or people that have bad hearing, uh, it can really make it very difficult. There's a ground ball right to Eric Rodriguez. Rodriguez had bounced over Eric. Tyler can't make the play. By the time he gets to Bueller, Wiley's at base. And <laughs> what a hop. How unbelievable. Eric Rodriguez had the ball completely lined up and then out of the blue, it bounces right over there's, him. There's nothing Eric could have done. Eric, I thought what he did, I watched him play that ball and he was backpedaling. He was backpedaling, 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 trying to keep it in front of him. He laid down in time to keep it there and then it just bounced right over him. Now, I wasn't making fun of Blake earlier. I'm just <laughs> simply saying he's a bigger body. That wouldn't have bounced over. That ball wouldn't have bounced over Blake. That's, it. That's all I'm saying. This is a... Uh, this is something. This is something. So that gives uh, that gives Bayou City eighteen. Yeah. That gives Bayou City ten run lead. Ten run advantage. Two for five. So there we go. Two for five. Here's a fly ball into center field, and Eric Rodriguez knocked it down oh. with his right hand. What a play by Eric. I thought that was an outfield shot. I'm just going to be honest with you. I know it was off the hands just by a bit. Daryl Miner hits one off the hands in the air to left field. And I'm going to tell you what. Eric Rodriguez went to his left, reached back with his right hand to slap it down out of the air. Witt collected it. Nice put out. Put a star on that one. Oh, wow. I mean, he, just, he was backpedaling. He's got the hands in the air looking for something. <clears throat> Broken clocks right twice a day. He got his hand right on that ball, found it, knocked it right down, made All right, it unbelievable. I'm sorry, play. time out, Rob. Time out. Oh, you think he knows no, exactly no, 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 where no, no, that no. ball is yes, in the air? Yes, you, think, you, you right. really think that was luck? Right. That was a fantastic play. Whatever. That dude, look, if, if it happened to, let's say, uh, a defender that maybe was an experience, if it was somebody that, you know. I'll give it look, to you. All right, great. That was a, he, he didn't just swing, he didn't flail out it. He stuck his hand out in the right place and knocked it down. Oh, Right. Impressive play. So we got one out, two Great in, play. right? Oh, yeah, sorry, two outs. outs. Got a strikeout. Two, two outs, two in. Okay. Seth Clark at the plate now. Here's a ground ball right to Rodriguez. He can't make the play. Uh, over is Tyler Rodriguez. He can't make the play. Uh, Bueller can't make the play. And Seth Clark is safe on a lawnmower of a ground ball to left center field. Now, look, that, that's a grounder, but I, I'm just going to give... 
Clark some credit here. That dude's got power. His ground ball and my ground ball are two different things. When that dude hits a ground ball, it's, it's quick. a lawnmower, man. It's got out quick. You quit now. Uh, having said that, uh, right, Rodriguez missed the ball. Uh, Eric Rodriguez missed the ball at short. Tyler came over, couldn't make the play, and Bueller usually makes this play, man. An 11 run lead. Cypher's at the plate with two outs. They had nothing their first time. He's one of the two strikeouts. Doesn't matter at this point. They got a big lead. Unbelievable. So here we are with Bayou City in control of the game in the bottom of the fifth. Swing and a miss. They're closer. Now they're closer. See, got a little bit more bat speed on that one. They're making some adjustments. Not that Fonzie isn't perturbed right now. He's got that look on his face like he's getting something that he doesn't expect from Cyphers. But there's a ground ball in the coffin corner going foul. Oh. But as tough a play as that is, Eric Rodriguez was on that. And uh, Cyphers, who has decent speed, down the base, but Rodriguez would have gunned him uh, with a two-step, two steps to spare. Hey, there's confidence. <laughs> there's confidence when you make the contact, even if it's foul. It starts to build confidence. He's had five swings and misses in a row. He, that does build confidence. Yeah, I agree. However, he's been missing because he's swinging early, and there seems to be no attempt to adjust on either part. You know, I've heard no words from the pitcher that says... Uh, to wait for me, uh, but I have also not seen an adjustment by Fonzie to put more speed on the pitch. So He's got we'll a positive body language, Fonzie does, though. Swinging a foul ball. Now that one's still on the baseline, so... Fonzie's uh, barking some words of encouragement. I have two ways to adjust to... Uh, you know, the, 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 the timing of the batter, uh, as far as the pitch goes, you can increase the speed of the pitch. You can also change the timing of the cadence to manipulate the uh, uh, direction of the hit. So you can say ready ball later in the mechanics of the pitch. And there's a high fly ball into left center field, but it lands in front of Eric, and this is probably going to be a put out. Yeah. It is. Eric with a nice base. solid play. He missed the base also. He ran inside the first base, inside the first base line of it, so he missed it to the, you know, he had the base to his right, he missed it. High fly ball into left center field, and it would have landed behind Eric, but on the play, nice track by Eric Rodriguez to backpedal, get himself into position, and easily make a, a play that's not very easy to make. Yeah, I mean, that's, he's got such quick feet, Rodriguez. Wow, so what is the height of the hill? Uh, we got one, two, three in there, so we're three, up to 19. 19, eight, 19, 19, eight, seven, 19, 19, 8. So we've got an 11 run hill to climb for the Indy Thunder. Yeah, I know we got Tyler Rodriguez leading off. He's got three grounders to Boudreaux. You got Erod coming up second in this order. He's three for four. And then you got Dykus, who's two for, 0 for four with two strikeouts. Dykus is struggling a little. Yeah, anytime, uh, anytime you have single digits and you're past the third inning <laughs> against the Thunder, you're doing something right. So at this point, you gotta give uh, you gotta give Bayou City a ton of credit. Their ability to to not only hit the ball and score runs against I, then, look, nobody would have believed this except for you know the people wearing the Heat jerseys right now that they would be uh, they would be in the same uh, class. But you would have to say they are in control of this game. And they are three outs away from forcing an if game. My God. <laughs> well, if anyone can lead them back, Jared Woodard can do it. He's one of the best. But again, this, this is, even if the Bike City win this game, they got to win another one. And they may have to do it without fleets. Absolutely. Come on, Jared. Is Parker playing at all? He's Parker, just coaching. Parker's not playing. I don't know if he's played much. Jimmy Burnett, the uh, this, the uh, on, former uh, Eclipse and Colorado Storm uh, starter for both teams is available as well. Tyler Rodriguez at the plate now. He does ha it seem to have a bit of an ankle or lower leg issue. 
Strike. Swing and a miss. Well, he was holding his ankle on one of those plays earlier in this game. Yeah. So. <clears throat> the six hitter for the Thunder. <laughs> would be the leadoff hitter on many teams. It's another guy that gives uh, the San Antonio Jets headaches. <laughs> hey, every one of these guys gives us headaches. <laughs> yeah. Third pitch, there's a take. The only, guy in the, the only guy in the Thunder lineup that doesn't give us headaches is Miguel Tello. And that's because he's a DF. <laughs> and he told me he doesn't even like to hit. Thunder. There's a ground ball to Blake Boudreaux, and he's on it. He's got it. He's up with it. Damn. Tyler zigzagging on the way to the base as well. I wonder if the wind is uh, giving the the guys running to first base a little bit of problems. We've seen a number of, you know, not only uh, zigzagging base runs to first, even uh, players missing the base on the yeah. inside, the outside. But uh, more importantly, the Bayou City Heat are two outs away from forcing an if game. Wow. And this looks like it's imminent at this point, Rob. I, I agree. What did he just say? Uh, so nothing, no, nothing of importance. So he's one, two, three, four. Tyler's helping Blake get to a defensive all-star. He's got Blake's going out of the Blake four times in this game. MVP. <laughs> There's a high fly ball to left center field. That one's gone, baby. Thing <laughs> is smoked down the left field line. Hey! Wagon still hasn't got to it. There it is. There you go, Jared. Was hammered. Kind of shows why he's the leadoff hitter for the best team in the league. Wow, what a hit. Anyway. Now, you know, all right, even if they lose this game, they need to get Dykus going. He's 0 for 4. He struck out twice. I mean, in my mind, you just got to find something here. Yeah, this is a... This is an important, yeah, this is an important ad bet for Dyke is to try to get off the schneid here. And they got to get some confidence 10. for next game. You know, even if you lose this game and he scores, that's well, a win. If he, yeah. if he strikes out in this at bet, you know, they might be taking some BP between games. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Play ball. Dyke has made back-to-back -back all tournament teams. It's late. Yeah. Jared is one cool customer. I remember playing against him when he was a little, little, little kid, and he was strapping the blindfold on for the Chicago Bluff and playing on their roster. Wait again. Nah, that one's, he was on time for, uh, on time? For, well. You think they're trying to go right side? No, 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 you're absolutely right about that. That was uh, targeting right center field, the timing was, so, um, hey, it's an improvement. <laughs> Okay, now they're now they got the timing down, but a large step by Dyke. As you see the distance on the step yeah, right there. That's the danger of the stride. That's right. Some of my guys, I teach them a wide no stride stance, so we just take care of one of those moving components. Set, ready, set. Ball. Oh, and I think that pass ball was just to get a little bit of uh, to, to zero in on the timing. Okay, so here's the 0-3, oh, three, one three. It's foul back. All right. That's a moral victory at the start, right? Let's get and one in so as, Well, absolutely. But as you see and you see on that one, the stride was in a lot. That one ended up on his hands. Now, also, whoo! And so uh, as what you see a pitcher will do sometimes with a three-strike count, look, the, the swing is always most consistent near the hands. So you'll see them, you know, some veteran pitchers will choose to bust them in. There's a ground ball he on the 40-foot line. He can fly. Let's see if he can beat this one out because Blake's on it. Yeah! Oh, oh it's up now, now! Save! Blake's got it up. Contest! Got it up. <laughs> Blake's got it up. Save! And I think it's in time. Dykus can fly, man. <laughs> Two outs in the top of the sixth. Easy grounder, and uh, you get no arguments from the Thunder here as they are down to their final out. Still 10 runs away. Come on, boys. And Zach Bueller is one for four. He's grounded out to Blake twice. Oh, Blake's got him out twice, and Wygan got him out once. So if this uh, if this game ends here, this will be an uncommon occurrence as Dyke has got the collar so far. Jeez, one, two, zero for five. Bueller and Dyke are you know just two tremendous athletes. They need these There's a guys. high fly ball in the short center field. Blake is over, and he's going to contest this one. He can't get it up. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! 
he got it up. Well, he got it up, just not in time for the speedy Bueller, Zach Bueller running to third base that Bueller. time and uh, beat it out. The wind seems to have died down just a little bit. Bueller's got speed. I mean, that ball went up in the air. Blake went a long way. It was a short ball in the middle of the field. Blake went a long way. Dove on his stomach. When you dive on your stomach and you land on that ball, it's hard to get that ball up when you dive on your stomach. Yeah. So there are two in for uh, the Thunder, but down to their final out. Well, Corey, Corey White. Corey White and Erod had three runs Corey coming into White. this inning. So Corey's three for four. He's a little more open with his stance than he has been. But his stride... Uh, stride is clean so that evened it out so a swing and a miss 0-1 oh, swing and a miss Jared was just a bit high with that one 0-2 oh, little little noise on the side that the umpire is trying to get some little kids to get under good luck good luck yeah <laughs> What's the count? No balls, two strikes. Oh, you don't like to have a timeout where you got two strikes on you like this. Keep the ball going. Keep it going. Unless you've run down the base three times. It's a pass ball. Come that, on, was, man. that pitch was on the money. <laughs> that was on target. So we've got one ball, two strikes. Corey swings and grounds one to the left side. Tough play for Blake, but he's over. He's got it. It's up, and that's the ball game. Oh! Wow. And we have just seen a tremendous upset by the Bayou City Heat as they win and force an if game against the Indy Thunder. Unbelievable. Well, I was not prepared for this, Kevin. I didn't eat breakfast because I'm like, oh, I'm going to be able to just get an early lunch, and now I'm going to be hungry. Well, I ate breakfast, and I'm still unprepared to two games. Did you see that coming? Yeah, so... Um, the final score of the game is Bayou 10. City 18 10. and the Indy Thunder 19, 10. 19, 19, 10. 19 10. So sorry, 19 to 10 was the final score. Uh, and uh, Blake Boudreau, obviously the story of the game, the uh, shortstop for the Bayou City Heat. He had to collect uh, double digits there, Rob. That's got to be double digits. It's Rob totals up the putouts. Uh, we'll relay the uh, statistics of the game to you. Um, no handshaking between the two teams after that game. I guess they're going to save that for after the championship is decided. All right, unofficially, I got Blake at 11 putouts in that game. Unofficially, Blake Boudreaux with 11 putouts. That is a, that is an incredible amount against the Indy Thunder. They don't they don't generally hit a ton of ground balls or shortstop. So they've got some work to do here. And uh, we'll take a timeout and we'll rejoin for the if game. 